and uh, I would make a killing doing it. I would charge kids five bucks, and I'd be like, "You make you make a hundred if you get it," and they'd be like, "Yes," and I would get like <laughs> they just see the end money. So many kids, I'd get like my whole class to give me five bucks. And did any of them win ever? No, no. one kid once. You want them to win once in a while. You're like, see, Bob won. won. It's like the end of Running Man. Yeah, and I had already made hundreds and hundreds of dollars on it. So I just gave him a hundred bucks. Rob and Jessica and Kevin went to this castle, uh, Castle Chilon, Chilon, so I don't know, I forget what it's called. Everyone speaks French here. I always, <laughs> I don't, when I'm in a foreign country like this, I haven't gone to a lot of places where they don't speak English. I guess Cabo, but everyone speaks English there. But I do this thing where I just, I don't try to learn their language because that would be worthwhile. How many words do I got to learn? Please, thank you, you're welcome, sorry. That might be it. Please, thank you. Oh, hello and goodbye. Uh, and instead of learning those, merci, that means thank you, I think. Ceci bon? No, no, I don't know what that one means. But anyway, instead of learning those words, What I do is I will just pick up a French, like a horrible French accent and speak slower as if I'm a Frenchman who doesn't speak English. And in that way, I can relate. I can relate to the other people. So I'll be like, excuse me? Do you know where the baguette is? That's about a regular sentence. That's about regular. Excuse me, do you know where the baguette is? I'll say it simply. I'll say it in the the most common fucking guttural words I can think of. Please, one and then they'll say something back to me in French. They'll go, and I'll go, yeah. That's what I'll say. That's how I'll respond. No words. Just. Anyway, you guys, it's been fun. It's been fun as fuck. Um, I am going to go from here. My brother, Michael. He's picking me up in Zermatt. No, he's picking me up here and driving me to Zermatt where I will meet my new nephew. He had a kid and named Linus. Linus. I got to believe that's after the show Lost. Um, and I'll see him and his wife, his non-Jewish German wife. Which I don't care about that shit, but it's a major problem. Not a problem. It's a major thing. It's a point of contention. We talk about it. Um, and then we're going to go skiing in the Swiss Alps in Zermatt. Um, he was like, dude, let's go. Sk- like, if you're going to be in Switzerland, you can come. Because I was like, hey, I'm going to have some extra days. I'm going to go there. Do, do you live- he used to live in Zurich, Switzerland. And, um, and I was like, he's still there? I have no idea what he does. I found out since then. Uh, he's a lawyer. I thought he just had some suit job, but he's a lawyer. He lives in somewhere in Germany. Got a kid. He's married. So he's like, yeah, you can come here to Germany to, you know, wherever in Germany. Or he's like, dude, I'll be there. I mean, I can come with you. We, let's go skiing in the Swiss Alps. When's the last, when's the last time you've done that? And when's the next time you're going to get a chance? And I was like, fuck yeah, man. That's exactly what I should do. When am I going to get a chance to go skiing in the Swiss Alps? So I was like, yeah, I'm staying for three extra days. Told my agent that. 
my agent's assistant, excuse me, Desiree, she's like, you going to Amsterdam? Like, as if it was a given. As if there was no other thing that I could be doing except to test out the weed in Amsterdam. There are two meccas of, of weed. There's California, specifically West Hollywood, and even more, San Francisco. And there's Amsterdam. My brother was like, don't be a fool. Don't bring back weed from Amsterdam. I was like, you crazy? Why would I? I started smoking pot in SoCal, bro. In SoCal, the fucking heart of it. That's where we went from fucking 15% THC to 38% THC. In the mats, number one OG. Of course. Of course I'm not going to bring back with me. Are you kidding me? For some Amsterdam weed? Which, by the way, the Australians... The Australians, multiple Australians, have said, eh, ain't that good. And he goes, nah, you're just being, uh, you're just being American-centric. I don't think I am. We'll see. But I've, I've seen a lot of reports. We'll see. I'm interested. And she goes, you going to Amsterdam? Fuck yeah, I'm going to Amsterdam. So right from here, I'm going to Zermatt um, tomorrow, and or this might be today by the time I upload this. And then from there, I'm taking a train to Zurich or Geneva and flying to Amsterdam where I'm going to meet Paul Morrissey. I don't know what he's doing in the meantime. And we're going to meet there and have some fun. We're going to go to the Anne Frank house like gentlemen. We're going to live our lives. We got a free trip out here. Let's see some shit. Hi, you guys. Welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank. I'm Ari Shafir. On this episode, I have uh, Barry Rothbart. Here's the deal with Rothbart. There's some comics I introduce you guys to. Some of them are good. Some of them are okay. Some of them have a story. Some of them don't. If I know a guy who's funny, but I don't have a topic with him, like Tom Segura, we wrestled over a topic for a while. Finally settled on masturbation. Let's just talk about a thing. I don't know specifically what you're into, like with the thing you have. You know what I do. The stories people have. I try to get out of them. I don't know what it is. So I couldn't get it with them. Let's just talk about masturbation. Fine. Um, why was I talking about that? So on the, okay, I know on this episode, by the way, I don't know if I have a sponsor. I don't think I do, but I'm not going to look it up because I'm too drunk. So if I do have one, I am sorry. And please let me do it next week because I don't want to lose all the money. Jews don't like losing money. The last time a Jew lost, I think it was like. Twenty dollars. It wasn't even that much. It was like twenty twenty bucks, and he couldn't find it. And he thought so his buddy was like, "Yeah, I don't want to tell you who, but one of the, your Jewish friends stole it from you." And the guy was like, "Well, I'm getting it back. I'm getting it fucking back." That man's name, Adolf Hitler, and he killed over six million Jews looking for his twenty dollars. But happy ending. He found it. Ladies and gentlemen, on this episode, we have Barry Rothbart. Barry Rothbart is a hilarious comedian. He is funny at everything he does. He does alt rooms. He does mainstream rooms. He does a Tonight Show. He does weirdo sketches like that are one-offs on weird alt shows where it's like, hey, do a character, invent something. And legitimately, he always comes through. Barry Rothbart is funny. I don't think he does a road very much. But man, if you ever get a chance to see him, fucking see him. The guy, he, he just, he, he gives you all the time. He gives you good stuff. Um, wow, how have I go nine minutes and I haven't really done anything yet? No sponsor even. Um, so anyway, on this episode, uh, I just heard about Barry Rothbart. My friend Sam Safer, who runs, who helps me run with Eric Abrams, that storyteller show, This Is Not Happening. She's also my manager. And we were doing a show in New York, and we were looking for names of people. Madrigal did it. Renazisi was home in town, so he did it. Big J. Okerson did it. Kurt Metzger did it. And we were looking for different people, trying to get Norton to do it. We are trying to get Jim Gaffigan to do it. Everyone had you know problems. Maria Bamford was in town. Whitney Cummings was in town. We're trying to get people to do it. Whatever. Still had one spot left over. And she was like, you know, I talked to Barry Rothbart in passing the other day, and his father was a straight-up criminal. His father was pretty much Joey Diaz, if he had never cleaned up. Semi-associated with the mafia. Semi, I don't know exactly to what extent, but we talk about it here. Um, 
just a real interesting weirdo character. And so as soon as I found out, I was like, yeah, all right, yeah, let's let him do the show. Hopefully he can do the show. He was great. He was great in the show we did at Webster Hall. He was great. By the way, I'm doing New Year's Eve in Toronto, 8 p.m. show at some movie theater. It's on my website, arethegreat.com. Go there and click on tours, tour, and you'll see it. But New Year's Eve in Toronto. Come out. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, so I said, like, hey, man, you want to come over and talk about this? Talk about your dad and shit? And he's never really talked about it. So, we did. Super fun. Super fun. Funny. Interesting. You guys are going to enjoy this episode. But before you do, can you use my Amazon link? <laughs> If you don't mind, please do. I know you guys are going to do holiday shopping and shopping for the new semester if you're in school. Fucking go to arithegreat.com. That's my website. There's an Amazon link on there. If you have ad blockers, it won't come up. Um, but right on the right side of the page is this Amazon link. And then right next to it is this black one called Amazon.ca. That's just for Canadians. If you just click on that, it takes you to Amazon. And if you do all your shopping as normal, I just get a percentage back. So Ren Azizi's wife does it a bunch. She makes me fucking rent money. Um, um, where she buys, you know, stuff to fill her empty housewife life. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to interview her, by the way, about being a housewife. But um, yeah, just go there. Just do that. And to, to, for, to remember, my suggestion, if you remember, go to, go to my website, arethegreat.com, and bookmark it. And then in the bookmark, instead of saying arethegreat.com, change this stat to Amazon. And so every time you go to Amazon, it'll take you to my site. And then you'll remember, and you'll click on the link. Then I'll take it. It's one extra click. It's one extra click. So do that for me. Um, Okay. And then dates next year. I have Denver. I have Chicago in in February um, at Zany's. uh, Denver, the comedy works, where I'm back since the first time since I recorded my album, uh, Revenge for the Holocaust. It's possible I record another album uh when i'm there this year and where else do i have i don't know other places so let's do it you guys on the outro i am going to talk a bit about what was it i don't remember oh man i had this whole thing that i was going to save for the outro oh good chocolate here by the way haven't seen much candy but good chocolate. Oh, we're going to see more in, uh, in, in Zermatt when I go skiing. Skiing in the Swiss Alps. I got goggles. But Morrissey says I'm going to injure myself so that when we're in Amsterdam, he's going, to me, he's going to get a hotel room with wheelchair access. He's positive I'm going to hurt myself. Fuck you, Morrissey. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start the episode. I'll try to remember what it... Oh, also, don't forget the Storyteller shows. They're out every Tuesday. Moshe Kasher was last Tuesday. Uh, no idea who's this Tuesday. Here are, the, here are the best ones so far. Joe Rogan, Kurt Braunholer, Big J Okerson. And then the ones from last year, well, whatever you say. So here's, here's how you find it. Do a YouTube search. On YouTube, search This Is Not Happening playlist. And probably the very first link that comes up will be the playlist. So it'll show you the very last... And save that. It'll show you the last story released. And then and if you go back to it and refresh, it'll do the new ones. And then it just shows you in lo- in order all the ones from this year. And then next, all the ones from ne- last year. So go check them out. They're hilarious, you guys. They're hilarious. This song is in place of a copyrighted song. All I knew about the store was the video you were in with Joe Rogan. Oh, really? And Carlos Mencia. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, all I knew for being from New York, which was super scary. It was like, I was like, does everyone fight after all every the time? show? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that's how I knew you. I, I knew you from that video, which I parodied that video, and it got like. Did you really? Yeah, I did it as magicians instead of comedians. Oh, I saw that. Tricks. Was that you? That was me, yeah. Oh, wow. I did that I a long time ago. I what, remember that. What oh, was yeah. that? That was like 2004. Four? It was like it was seven, eight, nine years ago. Yeah, that was a long time. Yeah, and Magi- I, what is it? Magicians parody, magician parody, Mencia something. That's hilarious. We were like, I this barely video remember is amazing. That. <laughs> we just we just went to a stand up show as magicians. 
and pretended it, so that one magician was stealing another one's tricks? Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm seeing all these videos now that I saw when I was a uh, magician parody yeah. Mencia. No. Oh, that David Blaine parody. That was great. Put in the straight man. That was the name of the sketch group that we did. That did it with. The straight man? God, fucking sketch groups have the worst names. Yeah, it was really bad. There it is. Somebody, Somebody else was cut stealing. stealing. <laughs> wow, 113,000 <laughs> views. That's not bad. Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, it was off of that video. Four minutes. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw that, and I saw Adam Ray had a video about uh, Kermit. Um Watching Two Girls One Cup, reaction video to Two Girls oh, One yeah, Cup. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I yeah. Saw I didn't that. know that was him too. And he was like, "Dude, you left me a comment." I was like, "Really?" <laughs> he goes, "Yeah, way back then." You were like, hey, it was really "Well, funny. what was your deal back then? Were you starting to make a name for yourself as as the amazing racist?" No, I was out for a little while. I don't know. It wasn't really a name for myself with that. Just I some people like, saw. I it. got the impression from the video that you had some some reputation. There. It was the only thing I had a reputation for. Really? Yeah. So for- when he was like, when Mitzi was like, "You're not." Racial comedy is not your forte. And then my only credit was The Amazing Racist. That was it? <laughs> yeah, that was it. So then some Renazisi was in the back, just yelled that out. But he did steal? Oh, yeah, from hundreds of people. Yeah, he did, right? Yeah. I heard the what the fuck thing a long time ago. Yeah. Marin called me after that, after, the, after he did the first, it was like a two-parter. After the first part, he called me and yes. he was like, I, I did this interview, what do, you, what do you think I should do with it? Oh, yeah, yeah, And, and I he, pretty much just guessed everything he, like, Mencia had told him. So like, did he make himself out seem like he's helping like um, POWs? And, like he makes himself so grand. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. told some story about how some soldier was dying, and it, and in his last like breath, he told this other soldier, "At least I got to see Mencia before." No, he yeah. tells a story like that. And Mencia was spreading that story. I'm like, hey, dude, that never happened. You have to stop saying that. <laughs> You need to stop saying that. <laughs> what if it did, though? Yeah, what if it did? I mean, it's not That's a really, pretty unbelievable story. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- I want that to happen. Yeah. I can me. see the guy's wife watching it, too. It's like, what? <laughs> That's who you're... No. <laughs> That's his dying... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I was... never, I've never watched the whole special of his, so I can't comment on yeah, how he did. Just but... like it's not for... But it's just like it's. I remember the funniest thing was he was part of that that group of comics that were like, "You just don't like me because you can't handle how honest I am." Oh right! Like I'm just too honest for you. I used to see that at open mics. Like you're not. Yeah, at open yeah. mics, people are like, "Oh, too edgy." I'm like, mm, "Just not a great no, joke." No, yeah, just not a great joke. That's just like you just dropped an end bomb during a bad joke at a yeah, coffee shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wasn't. It's easy to hide behind that. It's really easy too. <laughs> Just, I did that a lot, man. I did shock. I basically copied you really? David Tell when I was starting out. Did you really? Yeah. For how long? Maybe like six months, and then someone was. I had that moment where someone For was like, "Dude, months. you're doing David Tell. You know that, right?" <laughs> and I was like, "What?" No. And meanwhile, I was listening to David Tell albums all the, time. all the time. Yeah. And I didn't even realize it. I wrote one joke as David Tell when I, not on purpose, but like when I was I was listening to him for like a couple months period, and then like a joke came out, and it just sounded exactly like that. Yeah, it's hard to stop. Yeah. I would actually listen to his albums on the way to my early shows, like in the car. Oh, really? Like, because I, I was so nervous that I just needed to hear laughter. I needed to hear someone doing well. <laughs> so I would listen to David Tell, and then I basically just copy David Tell. I'm nervous for you when you started comedy, when you was, went on stage. I was incredible. I started the day after 9-11. I started September 12, 2001. Really? And, so the terrorists uh, wouldn't win? Was it like a reason? or? Yeah, I was like, I was like our country needs this. Here in New York? No, in uh, in Randolph, Massachusetts. I was in college. Were you already thinking of doing it? Uh, yeah, I was thinking. I called up a bunch of clubs and was just like, "Hey, I'm thinking of doing comedy. Can you put me on?" Like, I had no idea how to get it. A- <laughs> yeah, I used to get those calls all the time at the comedy store. Yeah, yeah. Or in the phones, and you're like, "It doesn't. No, it doesn't work that way." And one of them, I called. Uh, it was Dick Doherty's uh, comedy. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. In uh, in Randolph, Massachusetts, they had a Holiday Inn show they did once a week. Okay, and it was Bringer. So they were like, "Bring four people." And I was like, I'm just not going to bring four people and mm-hmm. pay for four tickets and see if they'll accept that. Did they? No. They were oh. like, you need four people. And I had to go to the lobby and be like, does anyone want free tickets to a comedy show? And I got like two people and they were like, fine, we'll put you up last. <laughs> yeah. And Dick Doherty came in and was like... The guy? Dick Doherty came in, the guy. Yeah. And he's like, I just want to make a special request to you guys not to talk about the attacks yesterday. Oh, and we no one was allowed to talk about it because I wanted to kind of talk about it because yeah. it was so ridiculous and it happened the day before. So not to talk everyone was about so the only story out. on people's minds. It was so weird. It was super weird. And I I got up and just I I bombed for 
three minutes out of a five minute yeah. set and, and just bailed. It was terrible. I just loved. Yeah. Not to talk about. It. I remember doing my first open mic right after Columbine, and the coffee shop guy was like, "You know, I'm all for saying whatever, but I just think this would be in bad taste now." <laughs> really? Yeah, but it was it was like my first week too, so I just remember going thinking like, "What do you mean? Just let him do." He's got a point. I mean, I it, guess so. Sometimes but it's they like, are in bad taste, and they usually are, especially open mics. Yeah, it's like it's going to be awful. Yeah, but still, it's like, well, let someone have the option of doing it well and, and learning. Yeah, trying. I don't know if I've ever seen a good like post tragedy joke immediately after. The fir- best one I saw was Benji Aflalo. Do you know him? Yeah. Uh, after the um, last school shooting, in Newtown. Yeah. And I remember trying to joke the week the week after, and some guy in the side of the store was like, "No, no," just like really mad. Some guy from I was like, "It's too early." He's like, "It'll never be funny." <laughs> and I was like, oh, "I'm not sure I agree with that, but okay." And then, like, later in my set, I was doing, like, I managed to win them back a little bit. And then later, I did some Holocaust joke, and he was laughing. I was like, so, so never funny still, you don't think? <laughs> but Benji said his take was um, that if these school shooters would just target um, um, special schools, retarded schools, the outrage would be way lower. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, and he did it. He'd act out of the parents of the kids going like, um, you know, I mean, you sh- shouldn't have done that. I guess. So bad. I mean, <laughs> yeah. He did that right after? <laughs> he did it within a week or two. I think that was the first one, but it wasn't right after. It was like yeah. a week or two. Um, it was the first laugh I saw anyone get on that. I thought uh, Sam Morell's joke about the Boston what did he say? bombing was He was like... Uh, because he shit about Boston? I was just jealous to see someone connecting with their brother or something. like. It just reminded <laughs> me that I should do more things with my brother. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I don't do that stuff. I, like, I'm not, I kind of stay away from topical... Jim Painter used to do, whenever someone died, Chick Hearn, whoever, whoever was beloved, Jack, uh, John Ritter, people oh, really? like that, he, that, everyone just universally loved. Uh-huh. He would immediately do a joke of anti them, like five minutes of material about them, and then end with, I'm glad they're dead. <laughs> yeah. So you just knew the open mic when, when it was like somebody died. You're like, hey, yeah. Sunday's here. Let's see what Jim has to say. I did. I don't know. Just that I was having a bad set right after uh, Gandolfini died. Yeah. And uh, you blame it on that. <laughs> yeah. No, I I just did uh, an impression of James Gandolfini, which was just breathing heavily into the microphone. God, he was fat. And then I was like an impression of him dying, and I just stopped breathing into the microphone. <laughs> and it was it was not well received. People like I don't know why people love that guy. Yeah. Like he just did one great role, but people like make him like he's a saint. Yeah, he wasn't that cool was in that dude. movie with the prison break. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know. What do I need to cry over that guy? He stopped making Sopranos. Dude. If it was Mid Sopranos, I could Mid-Sopranos say Mid Sopranos would be terrible. Whenever people tragic. die like that, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, they're all like, oh. And I'm like, they were done though. They were done. Yeah, they were done. Your your time with them was over. Yeah, someone from the Black Keys died. That would be more of a loss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if someone dies like mid making a movie, yeah, you're like, I wanted him, that movie to come out. Yeah, like that guy from Batman. That'd be like, okay, that's a story. That's sure. too bad. Yeah, he could have made great movies. No, Whitney Houston wasn't going to make any more albums. Mm-mm. Her style of or music they wouldn't was be finished. good. It'd be like a terrible, shitty Christmas album or something. <laughs> she should have made a rap album with Bobby Brown. Yeah, we don't need that. God, she was so addicted to coke. Um, <laughs> she was so addicted to coke. Does your heat work all the time? In your apartment? My heat, yeah. My heat constantly works. This just goes on and off at, at its own whim. So it's like warm sometimes. Well, they choose. Like, they choose when to do that. How, can you force so them you to like turn much. it up? I mean, sure, yeah. Do you talk to them and say, like, you've lived in New York for Do you say, like, hey, Who's I'm cold them? a lot? Like the your landlords? Management? Yeah, management. Yeah, of course. You can talk to them. And do they do stuff or do they just like ignore it? My, I don't, I don't, my landlord doesn't do anything. I live in a really terrible building. He does, he does nothing. They're raising my rent at $250 after this first year ends. To what? To 2200 Jesus. Yeah, 13%. You live alone? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's still a little high. I might get a roommate if I have to try to play the card of like, I might have to get a roommate. She goes, well, then it's 2500 Whoa. And I was like, what? And so... And she, she sounds goes, Korean. Is she yeah, Korean? and she, she's not. She's just oh. Latino. Mrs. Lonjo. And she said, um, change your rent case. I'm sorry, but it's going up regardless. And she goes... You reported that you're barely here. That's what I said. I'm like, dude, I'm here like half the year for me to pay this extra <laughs> yeah, money. Don't do that. And she goes, Move you reported Brooklyn. that you're, you're always here. However, you freely share the apartment keys with strangers. Stay in your apartment for days. I don't know what capacity. <laughs> stay there. So I told her, I was like, oh yeah, those are my friends. Like, I let Big J like, 
crash yeah, on the not? way to like yeah. you know spots or Fitzsimmons was here for like a month. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'll be gone. Yeah, what do they? And she care? goes, oh, you can't do that. And I was like, I think you're wrong. I think I'm allowed to. Let I think technically sense. she's not, but you know, stop being a stop being such a cock block. What is wrong with her? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. On the first floor, I should live above her, and she wouldn't notice. Do you have a girlfriend? Not really. Not really. That's no. good. That's a good deal when you can move in with your girlfriend. When you can move in, yeah, just move especially in. in New York. If you live together, split rent. That's, that's what everyone does. But then I talked to this girl yesterday. Have you done that? I live with my girlfriend right now. Have you broken up with a girlfriend while living with them? Yes. And how was that? Terrible. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to find an apartment you in New York. You gotta be sure. In LA, you can, within the month, you can find a new place. Uh, you can find a place here, but you have to kind of have a, a, a place for a month or two until you find uh, your real yeah. place. People are cool about people letting people crash on their couches here. Yeah. It seems like but, everyone understands, like, Hotels are way too expensive, and it's hard. Everybody to find a place. does. Everybody does. I've lived in some terrible, terrible places. Yeah. I lived in a place here that had no windows. Oh wow! Yeah, I lived. Wow, in a, you know, it was a one room apartment <laughs> with no windows. What did that do here? Oh. It was like a jail cell. <laughs> it was terrible. I was miserable. I was depressed all the time. Yeah, I like these no high sunlight. windows when the sun comes in. Yeah, you need sunlight. There's a reason there's sunlight in apartments. It's not just. I try to get 15 minutes of direct sunlight a day because a schizophrenic open micer once told me that. That what? You know Bob, Robert William Abravaya? No. You ever stay till the end on Sunday nights at the store? No, never. Oh, this guy's been closing it out for 30 years. He has schizophrenia? Yeah, he lives like downtown in like a, like a cheap like shelter sort of thing. Yeah, you take advice from schizophrenics? Twice. <laughs> what yeah. was his advice? Don't get schizophrenia? No, he did not advise me on that at all. He, his advice was one, uh, get 15 minutes of direct sunlight every day to improve your mood and whatever. Which is hard in New York. It's real in hard. In LA, you constantly are getting it. LA, it's easy. But now it's like, oh, you got to go in between buildings yeah, and a certain hour of the day and it gets stuck at 4.30 here. You don't do that. There's no way you get direct sunlight. I try to. Really? Yeah. Well, Tompkins Square Park is right there. Oh, so you like so I can find out. one area. No, I just stand and talk on the phone for 15 minutes. Oh. Where it's hitting me. I'd love to picture you tanning in Tompkins Square Park. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take my shirt off. Especially early on when I got here, when I didn't know anybody. Yeah. I would just walk around, no shirt With on. your shirt off? I, Fuck I don't yeah. do that because I have a terrible body. But oh, yeah. yeah well, you, I don't... Could, you could do it. You're skinny. What do you got? Flab? Oh, yeah. Really? Tons of flab, yeah. You hide it pretty well. I do. That's why everybody says that. Yeah. When I take my shirt off, it's disgusting. People are like, oh. People are like, oh, that's what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> like instantly life judgment. You eat me. too much of the wrong things. I don't know what it is. I've always had that too. Even when I was a kid. Really? It was like I come off like a reasonably in shape person. A paunch. And then like really bad when I take my clothes off. My legs are amazing. But everything <laughs> up, my torso is really bad. Take your pants off. Let me see. Hey. Um. <laughs> and they're off. There it is. <laughs> So you're okay at the store now, right? Yeah, I'm past, and I, I feel bad I haven't gone there in so long. I've just been in New York and traveling. And what do you do? You buy coastal? No, I'm living in New York until uh, June. You were there for a while, June. though, right? I LA? Think I saw you there before I moved here. You were there, like, a lot. L.A.? Yeah. Yeah, I lived in L.A. Oh, you did? I lived in L.A. for f- four years. Oh. And then I... Three years. And then I moved to New York to shoot uh, The Wolf of Wall Street. Back in New York. Back to New York. Back to New York. The Wolf I, of Wall Street. That's the new one? The new Leonardo Scorsese. DiCaprio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you playing Leonardo DiCaprio? I was playing Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, as, cool, man. As, That's got to be a big part. <laughs> I was playing... <laughs> for no, some reason, there's a Leonardo DiCaprio impression in the movie. Someone, like, comes in. <laughs> They're like, we yeah. can't do Leo. It'd be too meta. Yeah, no. someone else. <laughs> so they cut me. Yeah, I was basically Leo. Um, yeah, I was in that movie, and then I, I was shooting for way longer than I expected, so I got an apartment yeah. here, and my girlfriend moved here, and now she's in school, and we're just sticking around. Staying. Yeah. Wow, is that movie out? Did you did you get any out from it? Christmas. Oh, cool. Yeah, man. How long ago did you shoot it? We wrapped in last February. Uh, eight months ago, or a year and eight months ago? Eight months ago. Oh, okay. This past February. So you yeah. sort of wait. Is it a big part? That'll be cool. I hope so. I shot for six months on it. Wow. And it was a lot of a lot of. That's a good paycheck, scenes. huh? It was a schedule, like they do the schedule K, it's called, where you yeah. just get one lump sum no matter how much you work. Oh. So I got that. One lump sum, no matter, even if they keep you for a year? Yeah. What do you mean? They're just allowed to keep you forever? Not forever. There's, there, I think there's some sort of limit, but it's a really long limit. Oh. So that's if they have to bring you up for back for reshoes, for anything. You're just, oh, it's already covered. And the days were nuts. Like we were working 18-hour days. What was your part? Uh, Peter de Blasio, this stockbroker guy. 
Is he, that is a real guy? No, you're thinking of the mayor. Bill de Blasio? Bill de Blasio. Oh, it's yeah. not, it has nothing to do with the mayor. Oh. Um, I play a young Bill de Blasio. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is he a good mayor? I don't know anything about that guy. Yeah, I just like, you know, it's a it's a stockbroker movie in the early 90s, and I play one of Leo's friends in Stockbroker, and I'm always doing coke, and I had That's to be cool. naked in it. And hey, are you a coke guy at all? Coke guy? Yeah. What do you I, mean, like, currently? Yeah. Uh, Have you been? I've never really gotten no, into it. No, I was into coke in college. Okay. And I, I it was bad. I didn't like it. It doesn't do anything. I'm a big pot guy. I don't. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm not a coke dude at all. Um, yeah, I always got scared of cocaine. Like it was. What gonna, do you mean? Well, you know, from the public service announcements when I was little, from all the. Oh, like, it's super scary the first time you're you do lose it. your house and your wife. Yeah, you feel like you're doing crack, but it's then you realize this doesn't change. Especially when I, I got to the store and I was like, "Wait, I know a lot of people who do coke once a month or more, and they're not. They're doing fine." Who? Tell me every name. <laughs> <laughs> I almost started to, too. I'm like, this will just get me in trouble with people. They're like, why would you name me as a Coke user on your podcast? Oh. Do the podcast thing where you say the names and then bleep it. <laughs> you got to have the first like letter and the yeah, last letter. Right. Bobby Lee. Yeah. B- <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if Bobby ever got into it. He was a pill guy when he was relapsing. I think, I don't know. There are very few comics that haven't had drugs as a part of their life at some point. Yeah, you're around it all the time with no responsibility. You're also, we do something absurd. Our lifestyle is crazy. Yeah. It's just to get up and make strangers excited for an hour a day. Yeah. It's just super strange. And that's it. And that's it. An hour a day, five times a week. Yeah. Jeff you're Dye, lucky if it's an hour a day. Jeff Dye had this fight with Mike Vanderjack, and, and uh, he was threatening to throw him in jail, throw Jeff Dye in jail. Who? Mike, this kicker from the Colts. Oh, They got this feud. Yeah, Jeff did something illegal and whatever. What? Yeah. Like in person? Yeah. To his like restaurant in St. Marcos Island or something. And so anyway, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So um, he was like, his threat was like, you know, I'm going to call the cops. You're going to go to jail. And Jeff's reply was like, I'm a comic. I can do three days in jail with no problem. (laughs) <laughs> my life ain't that hard bro it's not gonna affect me yeah it's the I wrong threat it. have you ever been to jail uh no i've been to jail i went for what? i spent 18 hours in jail for stealing a shopping cart from a home depot no way yeah it's a totally true story how old were you i was uh 21 what and i uh 18 hours in jail it was it, yeah it was scary because it was on a, a it was actually on 420 I did it because so the jails were so full. I just, of people I needed, smoking uh, weed. Yeah, yeah. Because four twenty, everybody, the cops are out like crazy. Do you want some pop, by the way? No, I'm still, I'm still getting over last night. I was incredibly high last night. Okay, I have to like drive a bunch. Right are you after. driving? Yeah, yeah. I have those um, pot hangovers once in a while. So yeah, so <laughs> they put you in jail for that. Well, I stole a shopping cart for a dolly shot. I wanted to do in a video. <laughs> I oh. wanted to. I had this idea that. Dolly shots were amazing. I watched too much Wes Anderson, I think. Uh-huh. And I was like, <laughs> so you want something still? I need dolly shots. So, And my friend and I couldn't afford a dolly shot for this short. Yeah. And we just so we were like, let's just steal a shopping cart from Home Depot. Because they have those great flatbed shopping carts. Yeah. And we just went late at night to a Home Depot parking lot. And we were just going to walk it out. <laughs> and we get there and I do it. And it was just easy. We just get out. And then we get like three blocks down and four four cop cars come out of nowhere apparently they had cameras and they called it in and these four cop cars come and they throw us on the on the hood really like rough us up yeah in massachusetts no this is in new york oh. this is in queens and really? uh and yeah and, and they Man, just take the cart back well i what said am I do? this Resist? is what i said at first i was like I was like, I just found this on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, nice try. <laughs> I did that. You got to say like, something. You I was like, try. I found it. They were like, where'd you get it? I was like, I found it on the side of the road. And they were like, why, are you, why do you have it with you? I was like, I don't know. I wanted to put it somewhere safe. <laughs> I actually said that. And they were like, come on, man. Really? And I was like, I just found it. And I would never admit to it. Yeah, and, and then my friend... Don't ever reason, admit to the cop. They want you to. Never, don't never, ever. Ever, never. Even if they know. Just yeah. Like, then we'll deal with it later. Then they'll know I'm lying. Yeah. Well, my dad was a criminal, so he told me all this stuff. He's like, oh, never how say to do anything. it? Yeah. He's like, you basically never answer a question more than it absolutely needs to be answered. So, like, like if you're in a deposition and someone goes, uh, do you know what time it is? You go, yes. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Really? Yeah. You never answer more than anything. They coached me once on, I had to do a deposition for the comedy store because Pete Gray, this guy, comic, had bashed his head on this low hanging like uh, overpass or oh, whatever. Oh, really? Yeah. And so I did the same thing and he was suing them for medical bills <laughs> and they were telling me like, do not Don't say, say anything. anything more than, yeah. 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 That's what they have to do. Yeah. Yeah. I did a deposition scene in, uh, in the movie. And you knew? And, and I was like, I got it. I wow. got it. Yeah. I've had to, yeah, I, my dad was a, he was like involved in a lot of interrogations. He had really? a lie detector. He told me how to lie on a lie detector test. How? Don't emotionally involve yourself in any question. In any question? Yeah. So right away, what's your name? And just like, you try to tune out, like, uh, it's already Very, Yeah, just be over it. And you'll, you'll pass even if you're lying. So just hot chicks, hot chicks would do great at it, no matter what it is. Yeah. <laughs> All of my ex-girlfriends would be year great at it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's your name? Oh, Margaret. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Whatever. Yeah. I'm not going out with you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's good. <laughs> so, uh, wow. Have you ever tried to pass one? What? Have you ever tried to pass one? A lie detector? No. Yeah. I've never been given one. Have you? No. I'd love to try. Me too. I'd just love to have one to try it. Greg Wilson, you know him? The Greg Wilson? The Greg Wilson. Yeah, he course. took a lie detector test when that, remember that story he came up with um, him either stealing or not stealing that joke? From like America's Got Talent warm-up guy? No. There was some America's Got Talent warm-up guy. Mm-hmm. And this also could have been one of those other variety shows where somebody does, Okay. I don't know. Star Search? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. One of those. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, he did some joke, and the warm-up guy came out. He's like, that's my fucking joke. And he was all pissed. Howie Mandel or something. Like during the taping? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they didn't air this part, but uh, they put it on a story on the internet. And he was like, I've been doing that joke for 14 years. That guy stole it. Was it like one of those really standard jokes? It's one of those where he goes, have you ever noticed this? And everyone goes like, yeah. Oh, and to me, it's yeah, like, well, yeah. then if that's everyone notices it. Yeah. It's like, what? It's like <laughs> you, one of those things. Yeah. It's like a, one of those symptoms of drugs jokes. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Everybody tells the clubs, those. girls dancing in a circle. It's like yeah, they all, yeah. people notice it. Yeah. That's why they're all right the same joke. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's just hacky, but not stolen. And he took a lie detector test? Yeah, so Greg was so upset by the allegations that he, he paid 500 bucks to take a lie detector <laughs> test. And he goes, get me the better one. He goes, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> Did he pass? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, there's me some instances, were talking though, about it, we're even all if just you're like, telling the truth, that it'll come out like you're a lie. If you're really nervous. Nervous about and, it? Yeah. Oh, so if you're like, if they're fucking some girl, some, and it's your friend's wife or something, like, how do you yeah. know her? Like, well, we knew each other since high school, but sure. your heart rate would go up. Yeah. Because it, but it is how you know her. Yeah. But like. Exactly. Oh, wow. Um, Wait, how did you know your father was a criminal? He told me. He was very, really open about it. You said I'm a criminal? At, at some age, he just, he was a bookie. And at, at a certain age, he stopped working real jobs. He used really? to work real jobs and then be a bookie at night and gamble at night. And he was a millionaire at some point. And then not I mean, a that millionaire? Had this crazy past where when I was a kid, he was a credit manager. He was like the CFO of a major camera company, Rico Cameras. I remember that. Rico? Uh-huh. Is that where the Rico Act came from? Your father? Um, <laughs> is, that a, is that an act? The Rico Act? I think it's I about like, like um, mafia. The Rico, it's like how they could try people for... Oh, it's for, probably about a guy named Rico. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's much yeah. more likely. <laughs> this Rico dude, he had like five friends with him yeah, at all no, times. the Rico Act. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was, yeah, he, he was a national credit manager at this company making like half a million a year in the 80s, which was like a lot. It was like making two million now. It's still a lot. Half a million a year <laughs> then was like crazy. Yeah. And uh, he was a huge big time gambler. And he Where started... Where did he gamble? Uh, poker? Blackjack? Sports. Sports gambling. Sports gambling. Yeah. That's the mafia And horses. One. And he did horse yeah. racing. And um, he would fix horse races, too. What do you mean? Dope up the horses? No. He would... Uh, you, you pay a horse... He taught me how to do this, if I ever wanted to. Yeah. You pay a jockey and a horse to run slow for several races, and they become huge underdogs. Oh, and you and pay them enough you, to make it work. And then it. they get into crappy races because they're not running well. Because they're bad. And then you let them go. And you let them run to their potential. It's like when Daryl Strawberry was in a minor league rehab stint. And exactly. Just yeah. Crushing the ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah if you told if you He'd told like Daryl eight Strawberry, for twelve with seven home runs. <laughs> yeah, hey man, play really terrible for two seasons. We'll get, get put you in the down minors. to the minors and then let it loose. Yeah. And we'll bet on you to be great. Yeah. You know? So that's what he would do. Yeah. So he did all this, this wow, really how much shady would you stuff. Have to pay? And he embezzled money from Rico. 
he embezzled apparently millions of dollars. Cool. Because he would he would like create these fake accounts and just take the money for himself. Yeah. And uh, create he was these fake caught. Ac- wow. I don't really know exactly how he did it, but you know, if you're the CFO, you could do all types of. No one's looking shit. at your stuff. No one's looking at you. And then they hired a new CEO, and he started opening the books. <laughs> I was like, no, don't, don't. That's He's a like, no, book. no, it's fine. I got the books. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're the CEO. I'm the CFO. We got this. Um, yeah. And they found, you know, they were like, whoa, you've been, dude. I'm sure it didn't go down this way, but they were like, dude, you know, what the fuck? What are you doing? Yeah. And he went. Uh, here's a bunch of photos of all these executives fucking prostitutes. <gasps> and if you, if you leak this, I'm going to leak that. And he basically blackmailed them and they didn't press charges. Wow. And he was never allowed to work. But he was like, you'll never get your money back either way. So it's up to you. You'll never get your money back. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he wow. lost it all. He lost all of it in gambling. Millions. Oh, really? Yeah. He lost millions in gambling. So I'm guessing he was not a great gambler. He was great for a while, and then he would go on terrible. Sh- I mean, is anyone a great gambler? You know, like when you're a sick gambler, you professional poker players, lose. I guess. It's when the addiction. But that's not gambling. My brother had the gambling addiction. Yeah, he, he threw away his like college, not in a college, law school tuition for two years, and just said he was going. Oh, really? Yeah. He didn't even go. Just didn't go. <laughs> oh my just God. online poker all the time. Well, my dad gambled away our life savings, so oh. he lost three hundred grand on one game, and my mom left him the next day. He he lost on the Bill Buckner between the legs. Really? Do you know the eighty six yeah. World Series? Oh, he had and he was a huge on Mets that fan. game. On that game, he was a huge Mets fan, and he bet three hundred thousand on the Mets to to on the Red Sox to win the World Series that night. He bet against his favorite team, and uh, and the Bill Buckner thing happened, and he lost three hundred grand. Well, it was over. He must have been like, I did. Oh I know, no, yeah. he was. And then my mom left him the next day. That's so much to bet on one game. It was so much. And it it's baseball, so too, where you're like, come on, if a pitcher gets shelled early, I know, early, it's crazy. Yeah, he, was, he would do crazy things like Seven that. Seven-game series, I could see But he see was it. sure about it. Everyone was sure about it. It was like a miracle that the Mets won. No, but it was game six. They already won. I know, they already it was won like... a game before, two games. It was pretty crazy that they, that they lost it. Yeah. I mean, whatever. It was a stupid bet, but anyway. So your mom just said, I'm out, and what took you guys with him? With her? Yeah. And then, uh, but my you... dad was always in the picture. I always hung out with him. Oh, okay. And uh, he, and then years later, when he couldn't work anymore because of the embezzling thing, he, he wasn't allowed in any finance jobs. And that was his only training. That was his only training. And then he became a bookie for the mafia. And took bets. That. And took bets. Yeah. And you knew him through all that. Yeah, I knew him till the day he died. What did he die of? Colon cancer, and a broken heart. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what else did he do? That like, was it. He, he was just a gambler, but the house did he get? Fat dude, and he just gambled and and was a bookie, and he would hang out with me. Did you ever try to rob the mafia? No, but the FBI. He was arrested at some point for running numbers. He was working for one. There was like three at the time in the nineties. This was before everything became online. Because right. now there's very few bookie rings in the city, I think. Because you don't have to meet anybody. You, you don't have to meet computer. anyone. You could just go offshore. There's offshore betting that you could do. Legal. That's legal. Right. It's in like Costa Rica. You know what the government, why they shut down like uh, all the poker sites? Why? Because they weren't getting their cut. They weren't getting their cut, yeah. Because it was totally not. legal. Everyone's but they're like, wait a minute. Like, no, no, we're in the Caymans. And they're like, wait, but. But. <laughs> yeah. Where's our money? All right. Then we're just going to make it illegal to put money into your accounts. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, well, that. I mean, that's the only reason that gambling's illegal. Because they're really. not getting their cut. Because it's hard to get your cut. Yeah. You know? I could bet with you, and the government would never know. Right. So they're like, let's just make it all illegal. Let's bet 300000 on something. Yeah, right now. Yeah. And then never pay. That's <laughs> yeah. each other. Yeah. Those are my favorite bets. Just, the, I'll bet you $7 million. <laughs> make it 10. <laughs> Fine, pussy. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> and then he paid. Um, I, yeah, I used to do that, too. I used to, I was a pretty sick gambler. I would, I would you go. Do? I would go like alone to Atlantic City by myself. No way. And not sleep there and then drive home. Because of your dad. Yeah, he taught me how to gamble. I was really good at blackjack for a while. I would play. How could you be really good when the odds, even if you're playing at the best, are still 49%? There's, there's a system of progressive betting. You know, bet five, that lose, if you bet do 10, it and you, lose, you, you pay really close attention to cards. Yeah. And you keep, you keep moving from table to table. You don't stay at one table. You have to wait. You have to scout a table, basically. Why? 
because you have to see what's coming up. If it's a lot of uh, low cards, if it's a lot of if there's not a lot of tens coming up, sit down. Because then it's a good because a lot of tens then left. The tens are going to come. My friend Avi was a he's a uh, he's an engineer. He's got a great mind. Yeah, uh, and he would help us count cards. We would play blackjack with him. You could do it. it All he would keep track of. I think he would say nine or above mm-hmm. or eight and below. Yes. And so he'd go plus one, minus one in his head. That's it. And That's he would just keep track do. of it. And then he'd be like, he'd be like, hey, Ari, I'm going to get up and leave this table now. Yeah. Would you like <laughs> yeah. to come with me? And I'd be like, yes, I would. I yeah. understand this code. It's weird. People who don't know about it, they feel the turn happening. Like you could feel a deck turning. And all of a sudden, you start losing every hand. Right. And people are just like, what's going on with my luck? Because you can't double but down like if, if a six might be coming up. And w- if you it's more can't likely. gauge the deck when there's no ten cards. Ten cards is how you gauge the deck. So you're always assuming that the, the dealer's card that's face is down 10. is a ten. Yeah. And if it is a ten, it's way easier to bet because they'll bust every time. With that in mind. They have a with six that in up. mind, yeah. You're like, cool. So I would, just, I would go there, man. I would, bet for, I would stay there for nine hours at the tables. And I would I would take two hundred dollars and turn it into fifteen hundred. Really? And just go home. Yeah. Why'd you stop? I started losing. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. started doing a lot of drugs and and not. And being you play outside your system. Yeah. That's what I did with the online poker, where I was like, okay, I'm good at poker. I'm pretty good at poker, especially when you consider. But then you want to speed it up. You're like, yeah. Then you play wanna... four games at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not paying attention to what everybody's doing. Yeah, yeah. You're just like playing the cards. It's not exciting. Look, the the betting that I I did was not exciting betting. It was very boring. Like if you were watching, to churn out like, over this ten is hours, boring. Yeah, you know, because I wouldn't bet more than the table minimum. I would just be betting the table minimum, waiting for a good shoe. And then when a good shoe happens, you really press it, amp it up. Yeah, I had the system down, man, and I just stopped doing it. I don't know. Now I don't even have that much interest in it. You've lost the bug. Yeah, I don't really care. I, I comedy is so much of a. And adrenaline rush that I don't need. Dude, you go to every room there is too. You do the alt rooms and the mainstream rooms pretty well. Yeah, I try to. You're. I, I've been telling this about you late, lately, just because your name's come up because that storyteller show and something else. But you do like really well in lots of different environments. Thank you. You too. Thanks. <laughs> but I mean, like you'll take a some weirdo sketch thing. You just do a regular set for you know drunks. You'll do like whatever yeah. it is. Like you're, you're I mean, there. That prepared. comes from just living in New York and L.A. for so many years, doing every type of room. I guess so, but there's a lot of people. I never in stuck LA and New to York. to one scene. Like everybody that I know was like, I started the comedy store and just stayed there for mm-hmm. three years, or you know, I just did the cellar, or I just did the stand up New York, or I was just never in one place. I would just do every type of show. Yeah, that's how it should be. Because it's like, it's like fighting or, or, or basketball or whatever. It's like if you have a bigger guy guarding you, you should know to drive around him. And yeah. If you have a smaller guy guarding you, then post up. You got to know. You yeah. have to be able to switch it up instead of just posting up every time. And it was just out of necessity because I couldn't get spots. Like I never passed at a club in New York. Really? When I was starting in New York, I never passed at a club. No. What about the cellar eventually? Or just not when you started? Yeah. No, I never did the cellar. I oh, still really? haven't done the cellar. Huh. I don't even know how people get into the cellar. You just said the cellar. Did I? Yeah, were you just using it as an example of a mainstream club? When did I say the cellar? Like, oh, I, I was saying I'm not ago. one of those guys that do the cellar or do stand up New York or do. Oh, I was using an example of something I don't do. No, before that, did I really? Yeah, I've never done. I've never been on that stage. Oh, yeah, I've never. I just started going. It's pretty. It was like my last nerve wracking stage I had to do. What? Is, it's so like it's it's so like shrouded in mystery how people get into that place. Yeah, I had Burr and Big J and Bob That's Kelly ha- like has to happen, talking, yeah. but then they still had to push. I still only get like one spot a week or less. Yeah, which is fine, whatever. I'm just happy to be part of it. But I, that used to be a big goal of mine. I remember when I was starting out because mm-hmm. my dad used to take me to the cellar when I was a kid. Oh, really? And I was like, I would see Seinfeld there and Mitch We're from Massachusetts. And, no, I grew up in New York. Oh. I went to school in Massachusetts. I went oh, to college oh. in Massachusetts. Um, and yeah, so I was I always wanted to get in the cellar, and then I just stopped caring at some point. Because it's like this boys club. Everything I do, there's plenty of chicks there. But it's a boys club in terms of like the people that are in or Yeah. In. You can only sit at this table if you're... And then for when I got I was like, oh, let me sit at that table. I'm like, mm, actually, someone else I know is at another table. I'd rather talk. Yeah, yeah. It's less crowded. Yeah, that table, the whole legend of that table. I think that thing started when it was like, <laughs> that's where they happened to sit. And everyone's like, oh, cool. We all sit here. And then yeah. it was like, well, new people came in. And then it became like, well, you have to sit there. That's the cool place. Yeah, but it I, just I, happened because it was in the back. This is really strange. Yeah, and it, I guess it's you know the drop-ins there are crazy, mm-hmm. right? It's like you get every night, 
Chris Rock or Gaffigan or Louis, Louis or yeah. somebody's showing up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Louis Anderson, Aziz Louis C.K. <laughs> Louis Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> I used to see him at the comedy store sometimes, and it was yeah. like, whoa, weird. He's a weird dude, right? He's a very weird dude. Loves young dudes. Oh, he does? Yeah. Like, he's, has a is, crazy he out? is he out of the closet? Or is he still in the closet? It's like, he's out of the closet to everyone. He's like, he goes to like, I think he goes to like gay bars and stuff, but he doesn't like talk about it much. Isn't that funny how no one else would know that he's gay unless you were in comedy? Yeah. He's just, just like, out to your friends. There's a bunch of guys like that. Yeah. They're like, oh, I don't talk about it. But they're not trying to yeah. hide it. But you just wouldn't know. Yeah. yeah. You just would have no idea. Yeah. Like he doesn't... They should all have to register. Or wear some sort of armband on their arm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. That or could just be. act gay. <laughs> yeah. just, just come on, just man. Just be gay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, cool screensaver. So wait. Did your mom know you started gambling? Yeah. No. She never knew. She, she hated it. She hated yeah, my I dad. Bet. She would always accuse my dad of being a bad influence, and I guess he was in a lot yeah. of ways. <laughs> yeah, we. I was a ticket scalper for a long time. I worked as a ticket scalper. I would, with your uh, dad? No, by myself. Where did you grow up? In Queens, like shitty part of Queens. Were you guys poor? Forest Hills, which is like a, uh, it's upper middle class for a lot of people, but then there's this lower middle class section of it that I grew up in. Yeah. So I was around rich kids, but I was not at all. Like I didn't have. I never came for money. And uh, I would take their money. I would I would have them bet with me. Really? Uh, yeah. Or I'd sell them tickets. I had a whole scam where I would stand online and and you could buy ticket strips for five or six games to like the Knicks or the mm-hmm. Rangers. What's a strip? Or the Devils. You you buy a package of tickets instead of one ticket per oh, right. game. Yeah. And you pay way less. I and then I would them sell them for more. face or more. And I would make some money doing that. We got when I was in maybe seventh grade we were taking finals or the SATs I forget now but they were giving out it was in the, the lunch room like everybody was in there so maybe it's finals I don't know yeah but um on the way out they're giving two free tickets to a Bullets game because no one went to the Bullets game they were like Bullets yeah. versus the Bucks something like that. they're like just come maybe we'll sell some like popcorn <laughs> And so, as everyone's leaving, me and Chaim Zakheim were like, are you using your ticket? Chaim you Zakheim? <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. He ran knew, for Congress I knew later. Chaim. No, you do not know I Chaim did. Zakheim. I didn't know him. I knew a Chaim. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like, Very it means Jewish. life. Yeah. It's the, it's the main version yeah. of life. Yeah. Um, so, we just got all these tickets and went and scalped them for like half price. <laughs> it was great. We made That's a great. shitload. Yeah, you could. That was back before everyone did everything on the internet. So people would actually go to games. Looking to scale. Looking, hey man, do you, can, do you have any extra tickets? You I heard the best way the now for a Yank and for, or definitely for like a football game, because those get scalped for way more. Yeah. But like you just go on StubHub like 30 minutes before and, and buy, watch yeah. the prices just drop down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, people are like, I'm not going to go over there. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of ways to do it. That that was one. I, I I would always go there though. I would always I would never buy a ticket before the game. I would always if I wanted to go to an event. Yeah. You just go and you wait it out until the you game's about out. to start. I went to a Yankee game this year to see Mariana one time before you yeah. know, and uh, or just to go. But I got a late start, <laughs> and it's one I have to justify why I'm going yeah, to see a, yeah. a baseball game with forty thousand other go people. To the Yankee game? <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that? Um, but yeah, by the time I got there, it was like early second inning. And I get right off the train. They're like, hey, you want a ticket? I'm like, I have $20. And they're like, well, it's, I'm like, I have $20 or I'll keep walking. And the guy's like, fine. Yeah. It's just like. That's what you got to do. You yeah. got to really just be like, no, nope, I'm, I'm fine walking away. Yeah. And then they're like, all right, take it. Did you ever cheat anybody? With tickets? Yeah. Give them like, oh, like yesterday's tickets or something. No. Oh, my God. No. You never did anything like that. No, that'd be terrible. So you just scalped for as much I as you I was never get. evil. I was just a, I was a hustler. I was like, I would hustle. Me and my brother went to get a Redskins uh, Cowboys game. That was always like three hundred bucks for sixty dollars tickets, and um, but you have to save up. Yeah. But um, we went, and this we were like, you know, you're like, well, how much for your tickets? And they tell you like, oh, let me see. And uh, we were like, all right, I guess that seems fair. And right when we were saying it, whatever he was selling for, like say two fifty, and this other guy was like, oh, I have tickets face value. And my brother was like, oh, cool. And he was like, uh, how much? Oh, yeah, okay, I'll take this. And the scalper was like, we had a deal. We had a motherfucking deal. Oh, no. Yeah. I was like, we didn't have a deal. Yeah, what deal? I just said, like, okay, <laughs> nothing was exchanged. I- yeah, when you're doing business in a hoodie, I don't think you have deals. <laughs> <laughs> so you would just stay there for hours selling tickets and then leave? I would go, I was a huge hockey fan, so I, uh, Devils, the, I would go I to Devils games all the time. 
And what yeah. I would do is I would buy the expensive seats for good games, sell those, and on the profit, go sit in the cheap seats and oh, watch nice. the game. And I did that for a long time. There was one year in 2003 when the By devil, yourself? I would go with my dad a lot. So I started getting my brother involved. In my scalping. brother's from a different father, so he was like not involved with this craziness. But I got him involved in the scalping. And yeah. he was like, at the time, he was nine years old, something like that, 10 years old. And I would have him... Like what? sell tickets and oh, people he's would a great one. Cutest people scalper would love it. This little kid selling tickets. Oh, this little kid's robbing me. Yeah, they loved it. Oh, oh they bought, they ate it up. And uh, yeah, so one year in two thousand three, I bet on the Devils to win the cup, a huge bet, and they were big underdogs to win the Stanley Cup. And I sold tickets for every game of the playoffs, and I scalped yeah. tickets, and I must have made. I, I was twenty, and I must have made five grand in one summer. Did just they win on that? They won the cup. And wow. Yeah, I, I won a lot of money. And you saw your team win. I saw my team win. And I had this like summer where I just had like so much money. You bet them like I, all the way through. All the way through, yeah. Wow. Hey, I got to change this battery. All right. Am I waiting a second? How, many, how long have we been on? 42 minutes and 50 seconds. All right, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. You've been hit by, you've been hit by a smooth they asked me to ask a tell um, about the show that he's doing that the Comedy Central was like, ask him, try to, get up, try to get in on that. And I was like, I will bring it up in passing, but there's no way I'm asking a guy I respect yeah, for help. Yeah. No, I can never, I never ask anyone for help. It's really hard. Yeah. But that place, that cellar, it was just like, I got nervous. Whatever. And then when I went up the next time, it was like way less nervous because I'd already done yeah. it once. And then she was like, oh, I can see you're professional. Let's talk. Do you drink? Sometimes. Like before sets ever? Sometimes. I mean, not heavily. I, Do yeah. You? No, I did it for a little while. I started to like, for There's some reason, I would get anxiety before I got on stage. So for a few sure. years, I started doing it. And then people, it was like noticeably I was not doing well. Oh, yeah. But I, I thought I was like really smooth and calm on stage. It's weird. What would make you think you were doing better than you were? I'm joking. Uh, the alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I think it, it there was an element of, of, of being like, they're not laughing, but they're thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, things like that. Justifying like, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's not good. I have like one drink sometimes. I Sometimes I go high. I go on stage high. I like I'll do that. high. Yeah. At my best, I'm probably get high like an hour before where I'm on my way down. Really? I'm still high, but I'm over the hump. I think the best is when you do it right before. Matt Edgar was doing that for a while. Do you know him? No. He's in LA, the comedy store guy. Yeah. He was, used to be a door guy there, but um, he goes on late. But like, uh, yeah, he wasn't getting high all day because he was afraid he wasn't doing anything. And his first hit of the day would be like a minute before he went on. They're like, yeah. we, give him the, we give him the light. He's like, quickly, quickly. And he would do like six hits of the greatest LA weed. Yeah. And then he would hit him while he's like, you know, a minute. <laughs> I don't know about a minute, but like a few minutes. If you don't smoke all day. That first hit. And then you take that first you. hit. Really? I love it. The first hit's amazing, I'm saying. Oh, yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's your strongest oh, hit. Oh, it's great. Yeah, that's what I love. And then you get on stage. And you still have some reality, you yeah. know, you're still, you're not totally in that world of being high. I just, as I'm moving up in high, as you're like, when you sm- then you get higher and higher, uh-huh. you stop smoking, but you get higher and higher for the next yeah, 30 yeah. minutes. Um, that's when I'm like, I lose, con- I get anxiety because I'm like, how high is this going to get me? Like, <laughs> where, where gonna am stop? I going to go? Yeah. <laughs> so once I get to the hump, I'm like, oh, okay, I can yeah, control yeah, this. Yeah. Um, there's no fear there. That's why I don't like edibles. It's like you can't too much. control that. Yeah. Yeah. Too or much. Or not enough. Or not enough. My doctor Sometimes told me that. Not enough. My doctor in LA, the first pop doctor I went to. I love that you call him your doctor. I mean, he's not really my doctor, but <laughs> um, um, but he goes, oh, "You should do, uh, you should do edibles." And I was like, "It's better for your lungs." And I was like, "Well, it takes like an hour to kick in." By then, yeah, or vaporizers. He eventually he did say that. Yeah. He goes, okay, then vaporizers. Yeah, it's bad for your lungs to just smoke joints and a pipe. I switched at home. I was losing my voice every Saturday. Really? On the road, yeah. By Saturday, it was just gone. I wasn't oh, able yeah, to do shows. To so I was too. like, I got to do some research here. How do you get on the road? You just ask? The road? Like you ask the road? So you don't do it, huh? On the road? You don't do the road? I do the road. But uh, I'm saying, how do you oh, get acquire? Pi- oh, yeah. I said, how do I do the road? No, how do you get on oh, the road? Um, fans, usually. They're pretty cool about it. Oh, you like work it into your set? No. I mean, maybe, but that's not why. Oh, I'm I, from the podcast. I think I mentioned once that last year in Austin, I think it might have been last year or a year and a half ago, I got what I called a heavy handshake. You must know that from the yeah, mafia stuff. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, hey, man, great job. And they shake your hand. You're like, oh, there's yeah. something in there. 
And then from then on, people have been super cool about it. And they do that. And they know it's impossible to get some. Or if you don't, then it's like you ask the bartender, can it's I buy an eighth from you? the bartender, right? But then sometimes it's like two days before. He's like, yeah, let me call my guy. Then he comes in the next day and goes, oh, he'll have it tomorrow. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, man. I'm dying. I, I've, I've struck out a lot with that. And I, I really, it, especially on the road, I need it. Yeah. Like to sleep. Because you got nothing all day. You got nothing to do. You want to see movies walk all around. day. Yeah. Yeah. So I need it. And I, I started working into my set where I'd be like, but if anyone has, you know, let me know. <laughs> you know, I'm kidding, yeah. but I'm not. I saw the Polyphonic Spree in, in Melbourne. No. In, yeah. In Melbourne. They were just playing. One of the, I was like, can I sneak into this? I'm like, yeah, go. Oh, really? Yeah. I, didn't, I just heard live music. And then I got in. I was like, oh, I know this band. Yeah. But, um. Twice in his set, he's like, hey, we're doing great here. If anybody has any of that green, you know, it's tough uh, to get yeah. here. And, and then, like, 10 minutes later, he goes, so seriously, just throw it up. Yeah. Like, we don't have anything. Just throw <laughs> up whatever you have. Like, we really need stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Rogan would never take it from people because I would open for him a lot. And he was always weird about it. And so he would, like, people would throw it up on stage for the giant, like, theater shows. And he would, like, throw it back to the crowd. And I'd almost be, like, diving. Be like, no. 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 What are you doing? I do not have yeah, the same yeah, sense yeah. of alarm that you have. <laughs> I'll only I honestly only take from strangers if they're smoking with me. Wow. Like if they're gonna take a hit with me, I'll yeah. do it. But yeah, I also do not what, like you're afraid of being laced? total strangers. Um Remember that one guy who got laced? Who I was just that wanna, comic? No. He no. got laced with with weed when he smoked that guy's weed and he got totally laced and he died. No. Oh, it never happened. No one's ever gotten laced. <laughs> Remember right. that one guy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm thinking of nothing that's ever happened ever. I just uh, it feels weird to just take like a, a you know, it's probably shake anyway. It's probably yeah. nothing. I'll smoke with people, but then it's sometimes like, but I want to smoke tomorrow. Yeah, I get that way too. The best is like... I've heard the new thing is wax. People take wa- those wax things. Do you know what that is? Vapor pens? Yeah, those yeah. little pens, but it's like a wax ball. Mm-hmm. You put it in there, it's, it, you could just fly with it. Yeah, I don't fly with it. I'm still worried. But uh, yeah, it's like this junk. Oh, that looks like weed. Yeah. No, I, just, I saw a thing that does not look like weed at all. You would never tell. Oh, but you take the wax and put it in the vapor pen. Yeah. In like a little, then it won't look like it at all. It's just like a little hole inside like a of pen, it. Yeah. Yeah. This is what goes in there, I'm saying. And then you get a bunch of hits. Yeah, and it's way stronger. Yeah. And you could, I, I call it the um, brown paper bag for weed. <laughs> it lets yeah, us smoke it in public. Yeah, it's great. It gives cops plausible it deniability. Smell, right? This one does. Oh, uh, it does. I used to think it didn't, but then Renazizi was smoking one in front of me, and I was like, what's that? Oh, <laughs> do you know Joey Diaz? Uh, I saw him on this. Uh, this, this is not, not happening. happening. Yeah, his um, his mom ran numbers for a long time. Really? But she ran in New Jersey because she said the laws in New York were federal, and so you had to go right over the river. Oh, I didn't know that. To New Jersey. Running numbers is a crazy thing. That was antiquated. Yeah, by like the you time put, I was involved. you would put a card inside a book or something. And like, well, that's it your was, number, the whole thing is, is you're trying to guess how many people bet or how much money was bet total. Oh, really? That's what running numbers oh, the, is. No, he's the way he said it. Explain. Well, well, from what I heard, running numbers was there would be a total tally of yeah. how many people bet through the, the gambling ring that day. Yeah. And whoever was closest to that number wins the whole, wins like a whole pot of whatever oh. anyone bet on the numbers. So running the numbers was literally running to each person's door to ask them what they thought the number was. Oh, wow. What did you think it was? Well, the way DS, I just thought it was a guessing number. We're taking like a three-digit number. <laughs> so it was like one in a thousand chance. You don't win all of it, but you like win a bunch if you win. Yeah, and it was how much was bet that day. I heard it was also, it was whatever the total numbers from, from Aqueduct, from the horse track, the last three numbers of that. I'm sure so it was like 24,475,972. Like 972 would be the number. Which is impossible. To guess? so hard 972 yeah it was one in a thousand yeah but i mean like that's yeah, the odds crazy. are you won't do it in years you won't ever land on it but it's yeah it's crazy yeah just dream though five bucks and dream yeah it's it's like that i think that's what it is it's something like that like 100 I know to 1 guessing. odds but really the odds are a thousand to one but you win 100 There's, to one we used to have a scam where you would get it was called um it was handing out cards so the cards you'd hand out these little printed cards with all the football games that day yeah. on like a sunday and uh with all the football games yeah you had to get uh, five. What? Well, no, it was five games, and you had to guess all five games right to win the money, which uh, is yeah, n- nearly impossible. Yeah, it's like nearly impossible to guess five games. Like it you seems think you easy, can, but yeah, you think you can, but so getting five games with the spread, 
with the spread. It's fucking impossible. Impossible. One is about 50%. Yeah. And uh, I would make a killing doing it. I would charge kids five bucks, and I'd be like, you make, you make 100 if you get it. And they'd be like, yes. And I would get like <laughs> just see the end money. so many kids. I'd get like my whole class to give me five bucks. And did any of them win ever? No. no. One kid once... You want them to win once in a while. You're like, see, once, Bob one. won. It's like the end of Running Man. Yeah, and I had already made hundreds and hundreds of dollars on it. So I just yeah. gave him a hundred bucks and it was nothing. But So can you play poker and there's a drunk Mexican that shows up at, those, <laughs> yeah. at that commerce or whatever in LA yeah. and you just everyone's just like licking their lips. But every once in a while, like, please let them win a hand. Let them win a hand, yeah. Keep yeah. them there. Make them think. Well, that's the whole Atlantic City and Vegas. It's all based on that. You keep people there. That's the weird thing about gambling addictions as opposed to alcohol. You can't drink it all back. You but, can't. <laughs> but you can gamble it all back. Like, yeah. you can. You can you go can on a streak. It. Yeah, you could You could actually have a good week. Yeah. If your dad had won that bet, he wouldn't have zero. He, he would won have 600000 He won a lot of bets. Yeah. He once hit a parlay on the Kentucky Derby and won twenty grand. Win, place, and show? Huh? Yeah. Win. Wow. He won, He bet something like two hundred and won like twenty grand. Wow. Yeah. I was with him when it happened. He had like a, a panic attack. When he won? Yeah, he like freaked out. He was so excited. I bet. Yeah, it was Thunder That's Gulch what, in 95. Thunder, Thunder Gulch, Gulch won? I'll never forget it, yeah. Thunder Gulch, I don't remember who placed and showed, but he hit this crazy box, trifecta box. Are your memories of your father that of gambling? A lot of it. And hockey. Going to hockey games, watching hockey, hockey games. games. That's it. And then he was there a lot when I started doing comedy. He came to a lot of shows. Oh, really? He was heavily into me performing. How yeah. long ago did he die? He died in 07, so five years ago. Did you get to know ago. the mafia people at all? I did, yeah. What were of they course. like? They were the greatest. They were awesome dudes. What do you mean? They would always give me baseball cards, and they would always give me money for no reason. And really? Food, yeah. Like five dollars or something? They'd be like, 20 here's 20 bucks, kid. You know, have fun. Because they had disposable cash. They loved it. They yeah, they loved doing that. Wow. That's it's, like Ralphie Mae with weed. <laughs> just give you this giant nug I'm like oh, go, for, go for it man have fun man yeah, yeah. Right, here you go what's that here you go and you're like what yeah exactly um, wow, yeah I bet they'd be fun. was it kind of like the beginning of Goodfellas where he was like looking up to them yeah when he was a oh, kid? I love them they were all these like big Italian dudes then you'd have like the, the strong arm guys who were like muscular mm-hmm. they were like these Guido dudes there was Red this guy Ernst. Michael Fusco I remember yeah. who was the biggest you know I was probably eight years old so he was just a mountain of a person like he was huge dude and i would look and i would look up at him and i was like so intimidated by how big he was but he was so nice and then one day he stopped showing up at like whatever events my dad would have and i was like where's michael fusco what happened apparently he killed two guys and went to jail for the rest of his life wow like he was caught he bit a guy's ear off and the guy bled to death in a bar fight oh and then he killed his friend to cover it up. He killed the guy's friend. Yeah, the guy's friend. Yeah. I was like, please, I, don't, I didn't even do anything. Something like that. Yeah, it was, it was like that. Yeah. He bit a guy's ear off. Yeah, the guy bled to death. That means you have to be, got, get to the base or something. It's not just a chunk like Tyson. He got Tyson. the whole ear off, yeah. He bled to death from his ear. Yeah. They just couldn't find help. He just kept going. He just kept going. It was like in the back of a bar or something. Ugh. I don't. I didn't remember the full story, but I, I got it like years later. My dad told me. How much does that element, does that mafia type element, um, run over like regular people? Like when regular people just at a bar, just like hey, having a good time, never. you bump into somebody, and you're like, oh, fuck, oh, no, never. No. You have to be in that world. Okay. I don't think. Yeah, if you go to Howard Beach at the right bar at the right time and you mess with the wrong person, yeah. maybe you have to mess but with I don't the wrong think person. You're like, not just like, hey, watch this, watch it. Yeah, you have to like do something legitimate bad or or are they always ready to I don't snap? think it's like hey how'd that guy die mafia it was mafia he <laughs> yeah. died from the mafia you know it's like he was just a random mafia <laughs> <Yeah>. attack <laughs> like falling like falling uh yeah. gargoyles from tree from uh, buildings well what's the famous story in howard beach was uh with Gotti with john Gotti. yeah that some guy hit his son with a car hit Gotti accidentally son. hit Gotti's son and like as a pedestrian you mean? as a pedestrian and he killed him and he killed this family for doing the whole it. family yeah something like that oh no that's or what i couple. mean where it's like well he was crossing against the light and we just tapped something him. like that yeah i, I exchanged insurance them. information yeah. he seemed fine i drove him to the hospital <laughs> that was the only like like random attack I've. that's my only problem with people like demanding respect like do you know who i am it's like i didn't 
Yeah. So I can you take you that are. into account yeah. when you're levying your punishment? Yeah, yeah. That I didn't know. I had no idea. It was not disrespect to yeah. you. <laughs> That's why I play it safe and I don't mess with anyone. I just I try not to mess you with Just say people. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's how I am. When people fight, I'm always like, what are you doing? The people from Boston, I always yeah. see at bars. I'm like, well, stop it. I had temper too, and I used to get myself into bad situations. You did? Yeah. I used to. It happened recently too. I was uh, with a heckler. I got into a fist fight with a heckler at Westside Comedy Theater. Oh, I might have heard about this. Did yeah, I did about hear it? about that. Yeah. Wait, was I on that show with you? Was that Neil Brennan's show? Yeah, it was Neil Brennan's yeah, show. Yeah, you were outside. Yeah, yeah, Who was, yeah. Was I on? Someone was on. on. You were on, yeah. You were on that show. No, I mean, I might have been on when we heard the commotion outside. Oh. I barely remember this. So what happened? Because, yeah, you were you fucking You remember with this show. I forget that you were on this show. Yeah, you were fucking with someone on stage. I was not fucking with them. What happened was you went before me. I remember it now. Okay. You went before me, and these two hecklers to the left sitting at the bar at the were bar. terrible. Annoying. They were heckling the whole time. And not like heckles where you could talk to them. Like they would heckle and then they'd go, uh, you know, they'd like make noises. And like, what? And then just won't repeat Yeah, they won't yeah. say anything. And they were just getting more and more annoying. And immediately when I got on stage, they, they went, uh, not funny, like something uh, like that. Like immediately, as soon as I got on stage. That's the word. When a heckler just writes you off, I want, that's when I want to Incredibly. Fuck. Incredibly soon. And I, was, I just went off on him. I like... I just started making fun of him, his shirt. I, don't, I think it was like a V-neck, so I started calling him <laughs> yeah. V-neck. And then his girlfriend was also really drunk, and I started saying something to her. And it, got, it went to that point where it crossed over from being like dealing with a heckler to, oh, this comedian is clearly mad. Trying to hurt someone. I was yeah. like mad. Yeah. And then I went back to my set, and then he, he went at it again, and then he got kicked out. They kicked him out, which Why I've never seen there. wait that long? I'd never seen that there, and I was like, Finally, this is yeah. a great idea. But I was still so mad, and I was like, still doing my set. And I wanted, I, I came off stage, and I remember I was thinking, like, I was still so mad. I wanted to go outside because I saw he was still outside. I wanted to go outside and just look at him and just be like, hey, man, just don't do that at shows. Yeah. Like, I wanted to just say it to his face. To impart wisdom to him, like, you, that's a bad I thing. I just wanted, doing. yeah, I don't even know exactly what I wanted to do. What I wanted did you to want? go up to him. Ideally, I was angry. I know, but ideally, but I was when people like, want to get back with their girlfriends and stuff. Like, I just want to tell them this, but I want to be like, ideally, do you want ideally, her to cry and take you back? I what wanted want? him to look like an idiot. Okay. I wanted to shame him in some way. Okay, but I think what my rationale was to go out there, shake his hand, and look him in the eyes and say, "What you did back there was really stupid." That's it. I just yeah. wanted to say that. And I came up to him to shake his hand, and he wouldn't shake my hand. Uh, he just looked me in the uh, eyes, yeah. and he was like, "What? What do you want?" Like already combative, and I and I didn't and I started fuming too. I started getting mad, and I was like, I just wanted to tell you that you were an idiot in there. What you did was stupid, and that's when his girlfriend got in my face. His girlfriend like stepped up to me, and she was like, "You don't talk to my boyfriend like that. What are you trying to say? You trying to fight my boyfriend?" And like she was really in my face, and she pushed me, and like her pushing me was this guy's cue of like being like, "This is a fight now." <clears throat> and he came and grabbed my shirt, and I just oh, yeah, punched shirt. him. I just I just punched him, and he punched me back, and we, and we like had a scuffle, and then everyone held me back. Yeah. I don't know why the comics held me back. I think they were afraid of like it was a bunch of other comics outside, yeah. so I think they were afraid to hold this guy back. So they all held me back, and then he laid me out oh, while they yeah. were holding me back. They were trying to separate you, but they were trying to separate your arms. I can't fight. I can't fight and if you're doing. He got this. me really good. I had a big black eye and. Yeah, it was really bad. Wow. And then what happened? He just ran, they ran away? He ran off, yeah. But it was like legendary for a few nights. Everyone was texting me, hey man, I heard you beat up some guy. That feels good, I was like, right? I didn't beat up anyone. He good. got me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, maybe Neil was on. Maybe someone's after him. We heard this fight. Someone was like, are they fighting out there? And I remember thinking like, I think so. Yeah. I don't think that's just a, a loud, like yeah. fun laugh. It was bad. It was really bad. I, Your shirt was all torn? My shirt was torn. Completely yeah. torn off. Um... Yeah, and it was, uh, he. W- I mean, he clearly thought he won. I don't know. Yeah. Like, he got me good at the end there. Really, neither one of you won. It was I mean, really no, bad. Like, you didn't it was go really away with bad. more than you had. It felt wrong. I felt stupid for doing it. I blamed myself, and I, I obviously it was his fault, too, for being an asshole, but I shouldn't have gone for out even there. going out there. Like, it didn't have to escalate to that. I didn't have to. I didn't have to go up to him. Don Barris is always getting into near fights or fights. Who? Don Barris. Uh, he, oh, Don Barris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And um, I was like, who's Dumb Bear? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good nickname <laughs> for him, Dumb Bear. <laughs> I got to remember that. <laughs> hey, Dumb Bear. Um, 
But he's always like, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I'm like, these things keep happening to you. Yeah. And it keeps not being your fault. Everyone's provoking me. Yeah, but it's like you didn't, yeah. like you know, you didn't have to go outside. I did not have to go outside. And it wasn't your fault. You're allowed to go outside, but you know that's entering into the situation. He was drunk mm-hmm. and obnoxious, and I, I should have known. Like, he's going to obviously What are you going to get from him? Nothing. He's not going to be like, you know what, man, yeah. I'm sorry. And he was like such a white actory type. Like I felt like they think they're so fucking guy, good. Yeah, I was like, this guy can't fight me. Like I'm not afraid of this guy. So I, I just wanted to. I don't know what I wanted. It was just like it, this weird thing came out of me. Like I used to be like a hothead like that. I yeah. used to want to provoke things. I never got into it like a fight where I beat anyone up. But did it feel good? I would to get punch into him? fights sometimes when I was younger. Really? Yeah, I would. Why? You don't, don't look like I that was type angry. at all. I was just an angry dude. Yeah. Boys from like 15 to like 25 are just like, you guys have too much testosterone. Oh, it was terrible. You all bring it down a little. I was punching walls for various <laughs> reasons. I was like really bad. And then I calmed down a lot when I discovered marijuana. Yeah, it does calm down. down a lot. And you're just like, after you smoke the first time, you just go, Oh. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get oh. it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. None of this matters. Yeah. What else did your father do? Like crim- criminality was. Um, he was an informant for the FBI briefly. Oh, he what? ratted out a gambling office and we I had to go with the him. other mafia people. It was my day with him because he had split custody and we were with this FBI dude. I didn't know what was going on at the time. Yeah. But what happened was we were with an FBI guy and he had to go plant cameras in one of the gambling offices to, to like rat out his wow. friends. Yeah. And then he moved to the, their rival company, whatever it was. And they didn't try to kill him or anything. You don't do that. I don't know if they knew. Did, know if they knew. did you have any problems with the mafia? Or were they just like friendly, a source of like <clears throat> yeah, they friendly were just, people? I don't know if he was that involved in like the violent part of the mafia. It was mm-hmm. more like the financial stuff. Right. Was he like the guy from The Wire who ran that strip club? They're like, <laughs> I didn't see The we Wire. We all know him. Orlando, I, I think references his name. The Wire and I've never seen it. <laughs> Why are you doing that at this know, point in your life? I know. I don't know. You have a girlfriend too, right? <clears throat> we got to watch The Wire. Yeah, we just did Friday Night Lights. That was, that was pretty great, great, I heard. Cut up on that. And then Lost... So I'm like catching the guy who designed the game Gears of War, Cliffy B. Yeah, he said that there are two people, types of people in the world: type of people who love the wire, and type of people who have not yet watched the wire. (laughs) (laughs) So do what you want with that. (laughs) It might be overhyped for you now. Yeah, I like. I'm really big fan of black people. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I figured I could start there. Yeah, there's some whites in there too. I like, you know, the most racial term now I like using to someone to their face is black singular to be like, hey, you're a black. Tell me if people know, like, not like as a black guy, do you think just (laughs) you're a a black? It sounds awful. Yeah. I was always, uh, you know, this whole Avante Akendo thing. The guy, the kid who's lost. Oh yeah. You know, the lost autistic kid that everyone's talking about that. Oh, I see things for posters and they made announcements on the subway. I've never seen a search for really like why? I don't know, because he's... I've heard that it's because he was lost from a school, and the Board of Education is, like, really nervous that it's their fault. Oh. But basically, the description is he's a young black male wearing a striped shirt. Yeah. And it's like, what white person is going to go up to a guy and be like, hey, are you Avante Akendo? <laughs> you know, what white guy is going to risk that, like... Yeah, being called a racist. Yeah. No way. Hey, no man, one would. Hey, man, that missing black kid? Yeah, it's because... Like, man, fuck like, you. Yeah, fuck you, man. <laughs> all his friends like, he called you Avante Akendo. He, that motherfucker called you Avante Akendo. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite thing about black humor is the repeating. Yeah, they will all that. just repeat the joke and all yeah. get the same laugh out of it. I always feel uncomfortable two white guys in a room talking about black people. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I worked at Arlington National Cemetery for a summer, and that's where I first like got to yeah. know blacks. Uh, that sounds bad. Blacks. Blacks. Black people. Yeah. And... Uh, and I remember making a joke. I called somebody like uh, all in the family or something. And everyone laughed. And my first like, yeah, in the truck when they're driving us out. And then like 30 seconds later, someone goes, man, he called you all in the family. And then, <laughs> and then everybody laughed. And I was like, that's my joke. <laughs> You're getting my laugh. Yeah. I went to an all black camp. When really? I was, I was the only white kid. What was it called? Prison? My mom, it was called Young People's Day really? Camp. I swear to God, it was called Young People's. And my mom looked at it, uh, looked it up in the was yellow pages because she had no money. Brothers. Yeah, 
and she she was just like this is looks like the cheapest camp I can find. <laughs> and she sent me to it and I got there I must have been 6 or 7 and I was like oh my god what is going on here it was all black people on you all black people and me and I got beat up every day and but the one thing was I I could make them laugh by taking my shirt off and slapping my belly so I would do that all the time and they would be like yeah yo yeah this kid's crazy <laughs> So I'd make them laugh, and then I and then I got beat up so bad that my mom had to take me out of the camp. Why'd you get beat like. up? Because kids would just mess with me. Oh, yeah. You know, they would just like. That's weird. Kids don't kid. normally mess with different people. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> They're usually great at accepting. a fat white kid. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Hey, guys, we're looking for a target." Oh, yeah. Hey, I do. How about part? the fat white kid who wears really thick glasses with the Jew name? Let's fuck with that kid. Oh, was your dad Jewish? Yeah. Was that weird being in the criminal? Jewish As a Jew? Crim- yeah. No, there were a few Jews. And- Jews and Italians are all over the, the criminal aspect. Yeah, they have a history a little bit, right? Like the lawyer from, uh, <coughs> well, from uh, what's Godfather. Well, his name? Uh, Bugsy Siegel was Jewish, right? Yeah. Uh, um, There's this like um, uh, Brighton Beach memoirs type Jew, you yeah. know, that are like are into baseball and wearing Yankees caps and like, yeah, yeah, it yeah. just seems to overlap with the They're mafia. all around, yeah. It just seems like that kind of Jew. It's just the New York, the New- Maybe, old New Yorker. Yeah. Uh, they're always reading the daily news. And yeah, they like, grew up un- like they grew up segregated. <laughs> yeah. like they're not really. They don't do many Jewy things on yeah, yeah, high yeah. holidays. No, they act like Italians. Yeah, so dice. Brooklyn is all like dice. Jews and Italians. Dice, yeah, like dice. And you find out he's Jewish. Like really? Yeah, but it's he's like that like kind really of Jew. Jewish. Yeah, he's like super Jewish, right? Yeah, is he like religious or something? No, he's not right. No, we did have a Passover Seder at his house once, but he made me do it, everything like lead it all. <laughs> Are you religious? I used to be. I raised the Orthodox. Like very religious. Yeah, I lived in Israel for a couple of years, studied in oh, yeshiva, wow. had payas. I was conservative when my grandfather was alive. We would go to conservative temples. Oh. And it was strange. It, the women were behind like a wooden fence. Oh, really? During the synagogue. Oh, we had that session. too. I didn't know conservative had that. I was like, that's weird. It's, it was so strange to me. Yeah, you're going to be tempted. And it was to, so to boring. Fuck. I didn't very understand boring. Hebrew and nothing was in English, so. It's very boring. I was just, you know, you dove and you bob Dominant. your head. <laughs> yeah, you just move <laughs> yeah, back and forth. Yeah. When I moved, we moved from North Carolina in fourth grade to to um, Maryland and went to we became religious. Oh, and really? So they just start you off first day. They're like, all right, here, dive and <laughs> pray. And I'm like, oh, they open this book what with a bunch this? of weird letters. Yeah, yeah. But you spoke Hebrew? Not at the time, I didn't. Oh, you learned it. Yeah, eventually. But uh-huh. like, uh, I remember just like doing, like looking at everybody. I was like, I guess I'm supposed to move back and forth here. Yeah. And then like my lips were supposed to move because they were all going. Yeah. So I would just count. Just to try to fit in. So weird. And then there's always the hardcore davening guy who's like going really fast. Oh yeah. Yeah, the really hard. They mix guy. it up, going back and forth, and then go side to yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> the side to side that means you're really into it. Yeah. Yeah. Was, what a weird thing. Why do you have to bob your head up and down? Fervor. It's so strange. Yeah, I would do, you would get into it. They really get into it. I yeah. was. I thought it was all so dumb. I really always thought it was really dumb. Yeah, the whole is. the whole bar mitzvah thing was really dumb to me. I learned it all phonetically because I never really learned Hebrew. Oh. So I just memorized the sound of it. The sound of it. Yeah, I would do that. Plus, that's old Hebrew and a tune. It was like the Mickey Mouse Club. It was uh, like, like my hop tour portion. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all the same. Anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't have vowels, but they have like notes. Uh huh. Yeah. It was, it was. I thought it was so dumb. And then everything was the Holocaust. Every part of Hebrew school was learning about the Holocaust. It's a big moment. In the history. Huge. Eli Wiesel was all we read. Oh, he came to talk to our school all the time. No, yeah, you got he, him in person. He, he wrote you were in so DC. long though. DC. Yeah. Yeah. All his books were like forever. Like, you're out. Quit belly aching. Yeah. I started to be desensitized to the Holocaust because I learned so much about it yeah. that I started, like, not caring. It was, like, shocking for the first few lessons, and then you're just like, I don't know. Yeah. Have you ever gone to the museum in D.C.? No. Whew. My dad started volunteering there. He was always big about not talking about it. Yeah. He's a survivor. But uh, he was always like, he just wouldn't bring it up. Yeah. He brought up the army days a little bit, the Israeli army days, but, like, he wouldn't really bring up the Holocaust. <laughs> and he was always kind of like... I just had the idea that he was like, I'll remember it my way. Like, I don't need to fuck. He wouldn't watch Shendo's List. He wouldn't watch. He was like, these aren't. And he wouldn't go to the museum, but then he started volunteering there. And I went, man, that's overwhelming. Uh, Yeah. I'm desensitized to it, too. I'll just make jokes. I don't feel the Holocaust. But when you go there and see all the shoes and shit, (laughs) like, these are people's shoes. I can imagine someone tying these shoelaces. Yeah. And they were dead at seven. It's really bad. 
Yeah. Just the stories they would tell kids, like Nazis throwing babies in the air and shooting them for oh. target practice. Wow. In front of the mothers? Yeah. Like, oh, please don't these... do that. Oh, that was oh, my kid. That was my kid. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> it's just cartoony bad. Like, how is it that bad? It's so, yeah, you can't really even face it. It's so overboard. I always say this, too, that's amazing because I've been to Germany that the Germans just get a pass for it. I feel like Have you it ever was a mentioned the Holocaust time? on stage in front of a German? No. They will they'll physically get uncomfortable. They will look like it's away. It's weird, right? Yeah, like it's the worst black mark on but anyone's history. why does everyone not hate Germans? Because if you're 35 years old, what did you do? Yeah, I you guess so, but it's still All like... All you grew up was with, with like a horrible, like, uh, a horrible economy because you had to pay so many reparations out. But what I mean is the South is still racist, even though oh, slavery yeah. was 200 years ago, right? Yeah. There's still like some leftover stuff of, and anger towards... But that's... It, disappeared in like 10 years yeah everything was gone they were like no that was not that was what not we us. wanted that was really not according to plan <laughs> yeah. you know it was yeah. there was how did everyone shift that quickly in germany yeah people are still alive that it happened to it's yeah. not like slavery that's nuts and even they're probably just like oh that was not my good. grandmother when my grandfather died they had to decide whether or not they should because the german government was paying him reparations for the rest of his life like whatever it was a week and um they were like should we just keep taking it and not telling they're dead? On one hand, fuck them. Yeah. No one cares if they waste more money. Yeah. But on the other hand, you're like, we don't need your money. But it's like, well, you were taking it for like 50 years. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't like put your foot down now. Keep taking the cash. Oh, wow. So they paid people forever. Forever. Like your life How much was fucked it? up enough. I don't remember. I should find out. I don't remember. It was just another source of income. Yeah. I saw this documentary about the kids of the major Nazi generals, like mm. Goebbels and uh, yeah. uh, Himmler. And Jimmy Goebbels. Jimmy Goebbels. Like yeah. the grandkids now. And what? They're all just like, ooh, that was awkward. Change they're all name. just like, I can't believe that my grandfather did that. Yeah. And it's, you know, you have to, at some point, blame something in the family, right? <laughs> like something happened, line. right? Yeah, I don't know. The whole country got into it, though. Was it just a fad, and then it was over? Like, there still must be anti-Semitism. No, kept, um, yeah, for a while there, but they put harsh like legislation against it. They cannot have a Nazi party in Germany. Of it's illegal. <laughs> yeah. But they have a Nazi party in America. Of course, yeah. In, in Russia. In yeah. Israel, they have a Nazi party. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. They don't get many votes, but like no, they, they have. Don't. Yeah, that's not... <laughs> they're not really running to win. Oh, it's weird. like lower than the Whig party here. Super weird. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite of that was Stan Hope's joke where he likes to vote for the Whig Party because he likes to see the, um, whoever their candidate is because he likes to like, look at his TV, see all the votes. It's like, Republican, you know, 2,470,000, Democrat, 2,560,000, and then like, Whig Party, 14. Yeah. And then he'd like, he'd like to go, come back, and say, 15, there's 15. my vote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Registered. Uh. Did your father ever commit any violence or anything? No, no. It no. wasn't that part of the criminal. No, they, well, that's what people think is bookies break people's legs and, and well, beat did he? How did he up. collect? You just don't. You, if people don't pay, they never bet again, and that was enough incentive to keep paying because they want to win next week. And that was just covered by the the five percent. Or a lot of people would give you money up ahead front. of time. That's yeah. how Vegas works. So like, yeah. we're in trusting you. No. Yeah. This. So he never really had to do anything like that. Wow, that's good. Yeah, I, when I started getting clients and I started like getting people I know to bet through me, there were a few people who didn't pay. Yeah. And I, and did you ask your dad like, what do I do here? I was like, what do I do? He's like, just say you can't bet anymore, and they'll find a way to pay and bet through you because if, they, if they have want. the need. They want to, yeah. If they have the need, they want the need because they want to win it back. Like any addiction. Yeah. Like alcohol. If you're thrown out, you're like, well, I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. Don't throw me out forever. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they they have a need, and if and if they don't, wow. then you know just fuck them and move on. Wow! Don't so give people you credit that you don't trust. Right, right. Yeah. Only let them have so much. Yeah. Like, I can't afford to not pay this. Uh-huh. Did you? When did you become aware that your dad was doing stuff that was not legal? I was, I don't know, maybe like fifteen, fourteen, mm-hmm. or fifteen, because my dad would lie for a long time and say that he was. He said he was a music producer for a while. He said he was an accountant. Which he was. He accounted his and own he, books. Yeah, he sort yeah. of was an accountant earlier in life. Um, and then at some point, he was like, uh, I just gamble with people. And I was like, what does that mean? And he explained to me what that meant. And I didn't know it was illegal. And then 
Right. And then he got arrested. He got arrested Why in would it be illegal? 96 or something. For gambling? Yeah, they took down a whole a whole ring of, of uh, mm-hmm. gambling offices, and he was part of it. And that's when he turned and worked for the FBI briefly. Oh. Yeah. And so he didn't have to do jail time? Huh? He didn't have to jail time? No, he didn't do any jail time. Wow. Wow. <coughs> My dad went away for a while, and they just they, we just had to tell all, the, all our friends. Then we moved and became religious. That's when we became religious. Yeah. And uh, we had to tell all my friends he's on a business trip. <laughs> yeah. And they kept saying, like, they kept asking. And I could tell later, they were like, what did oh, you What? What did he go to jail for? I think it was, like, embezzling money. They said it was, like, it was the same thing as taking away checks and balances. I found out uh, way later. It was, like, he had all his money from the banks. And he was supposed to be the one, like, or he wasn't supposed to be the one checking to see if all the gold was there to, like, for collateral. Oh, really? He just really? kept telling whoever the bank's checker was, like, no, I checked. It's good. It's all That's in there. Good. And then just investing <laughs> that money. Yeah. Man, Jews, huh? <coughs> Fucking Jews. Jews. Great with cash. Where are you going this weekend? Uh, I'm going to be in Arlington at the Draft House. Oh, that's cool. I saw Swingers there Swingers. Like when it came out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was a fun place to go Have see a movie. Have you performed there? Mm-mm. It's great. Really? I've heard Super it's cool. Fun. I've headlined there before. <coughs> it's really, uh, it's a really fun room. Yeah. And they pack it out. They do. That's what an alt road room. It's one of my top five in the country. <laughs> really? Yeah. The DC yeah. Improv is one of my top five. Really? Maybe I'll try to head over there. The Improv's great. Improv's great. Improv's Privately run improv. A lot of fun. Melba's always cool. Um, Allison. I love uh, in Madison. I'm actually, uh, the comedy on state is a fun I just club, did that. Right? Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, really fun. They have a Thursday night. I'll be there in January. When? Second through fourth. Okay. Where do you got? When um, does this thing air? Well, I got one for this week. I think I'm going to put it up probably Next in two week? weeks or three weeks, or I'll save it if, if you get like a date you want to promote. No, I mean that's fine. Do you have a big road date. Coming up <laughs> well, if you're weekend? in Madison, uh, January second to the fourth, I'm on comedy. I'm at comedy on stage. Okay, that's a yeah. good one. That Thursday show though, it's all the college kids. Yeah, and it's like I thought it was going to be bad, but then I was like, no, this is like ninety percent college audience, and it's three hundred people. It was amazing. So like, let me see what jokes work for like an sure. eighteen to twenty three year old audience. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. That's fun. I just did the Laughing Skulls, really fun club. I wanted to go there. Atlanta. I did. I did. Um, I did um, their festival only for the purpose of like getting into the Laughing Skull. Oh, really? Yeah, and I went all the way to like the final round. It was a contest, which I found out later. Yeah, yeah. Sam Morrell won actually. That's where I met him. But um. Yeah, at the end I was like, okay, I did. I had like three great sets here. Kept moving, and then I was like, hey man, I you know I would love to come. Come, he's like, oh, we're kind of busy now. I was like, all right, great. Uh, <laughs> I just I knew what it was. Waste. I've gotten that answer before. I was like, fucking wasting my time. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's a great room. Yeah, that's a really fun room. When are you going there? Skull. Yeah. I was just there. I was just yeah. there like last month. I'm going to Atlanta with this, like the other one, punchline with this will already be out. Oh yeah. How often do you go on the road? I've been uh, I've been doing one or two a month, pretty okay. consistently. One what do you got in weekends. December then? Um, December nothing. December's really I don't December's know why a clean December's month. Really slow. It's a clean month. Oh, you're pretty clean though, aren't you? Uh, not like purposefully. Not, not incredibly clean. Oh no, I do a lot of on the road. I do more sex stuff than in oh, nice. in New York. There. Um, how come? I don't know. I just feel like it's... Feel embarrassed about it here? No, I'm not embarrassed about it. I guess I just... I can go farther with it, I feel like, on the road. Whereas here, I want to do more jokes in less time. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not going to spend my whole set doing three jokes or two jokes. I kind of want to do shorter sets. Yeah. Shorter jokes. Are you trying to do that? Trying to. I don't have any... You ever, like finish and like oh i still got two minutes left like get the light at the end of one of your long bits and like i should do something and then i realized i just don't have anything to fill one minute really yeah i just don't i have like one joke really yeah i need to be better at that i don't know yeah i do that i do i do shorter jokes here than on the road Um, that's what i'm trying to do now with my set is is make is have the jokes go way longer oh yeah you can just extend them it's great yeah i want to do that i found that anything you concentrate on like let me try to do this while if you just say that and then actually do concentrate on it a year later you're like cool i'm better at this now yeah i'm way better at storytelling now from doing that show for a while i noticed even just do it just preparing to do your show like i did i ran that story a few times did you? Good. Shows, and Went then great. and then doing it at your show like it made me look at my jokes differently yeah when you're like oh i can have an ending to something yeah i need to have like an arc and i never talk about my family or my dad or yeah, my sam was talking about life. that like why don't you 
I don't know. I never do. You would think that would almost be used as a cr- I could see a lot of new comics using that as a crutch. Like, that would be only your act. Like, I'm the son of a, of a bookie. Sure, and yeah. It would be, be horrible. Yeah. But now you're at the point where you could do it in a real way. I think I feel like you need to you need to first be a little well known to do it or like have like some reputation of being funny other than that. Uh huh. And then you could get into that. Yeah. And just don't let it be all of you. Yeah. Like I think when Louis C.K. started getting into family stuff, it was because he already had like a rep and an act and a like Yeah. Like I don't know if that would have worked when you're an up and coming comic. The shitting on your family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hey, you guys have kids? You hate them too, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that would have worked. No. I don't. Well, what's your shtick? I don't. You don't have like a thing, right? You talk I mean, about people everything. say I'm dirty, but it's not like I'm trying to be ever. Yeah, but you talk about I anything. Just don't care. Right? Yeah, you don't talk about your past a lot, right? Once I mention it once in a while. I used to be religious, but it's only to set up something else, so you know sure. how this applies to the story. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's hard to make a choice to do that. Yeah. Plus, I remember Aaron Cater telling me early on that was like, "You should talk about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict." I mean, you used to live there. I know you care about it, and I tried, and this is how it came off every time. Like. You know, I have like one joke, one punchline, and then be like, "Yeah, and the fucking these fucking animals. That's what they are. They're all animals." <laughs> That's what my grandmother. Yeah, just angry. Yeah. Really? Yeah, my grandmother's Israeli. <sighs> well, my mom was born in Israel too, and they talk about Arabs like oh yeah, like dogs. They really they hate do. Arabs. I'm just starting to see like, because for a while I was like, yes, I mean they attacked Israelis when they were making settlements there. They would just attack them constantly, but and then Israel kind of. But now it's become an apartheid state. Them. It's yeah. become an apartheid state. Yeah, they kind of crushed them. Those refugees, they all ran away for fear, yeah. of, for fear of reprisals after Israel got independent. Like, oh, if you're the government now, we don't want to like get payback. So like, yeah. well, now you can't come back. It's but a they weird didn't, like, situation. Do anything. It's like Israel's won clearly, yeah. but stop now. Is everything better? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if everything's better from winning. And then they have these Arab that, citizens that are like. Like Israelis, and they just don't yeah. want to give them rights because they're afraid they're going to outbreed the Jews. And you're like, well, then that, so be it. Yeah. You can't stop someone. <laughs> yeah. You can't keep them oppressed because you're afraid in two yeah. generations you won't be the majority. That's well, what we that's do here. The, that's, and it's horrible. That's eugenics. That's yeah. the Holocaust. That's yeah. what they were trying to do in the Holocaust. Yeah, let's breed out. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, the more I see it now, I'm like, when I see pictures of somebody in rubble, I'm like, well, they weren't. They weren't making a bomb that's just some guy who has a family it's some dude yeah. yeah now he has no house and it seems so far away it does like I, I was i was talking about this on stage at some point that you could you could tell me anything happened in the middle east and i'll just be like yeah or in africa i'll be like yeah i can see that but like yeah are- some guy got his head cut off and then thrown into a crowd <laughs> and then the crowd removed his limbs and i'd be like up. yeah yeah it's the middle east yeah i can yeah. see that like there was a story from Brazil from the other day. Did you hear about that? What that happened? this ref made a bad call. And they killed him? And this this guy, uh, one of the players on the team came up and wanted to fight him. And the ref stabbed the guy to death oh, on to the death? field. Stabbed the, the player to death on the field. And then the, the fans rushed the field and decapitated the ref and hung his, his head from a stake in the middle of the field. And the whole crowd cheered. Wow. That happened in Brazil a few That's weeks ago. That's one of my ago. biggest fears, mob rule stuff. Where you're like, no, no, guys, it's not what you think. Yeah. It's like, they're just going. They decapitated this guy. He did stab him to everyone. death. I almost feel like that's justified. But it's, the whole thing is insane. Yeah, it is pretty insane. We just have soccer games. Yeah. And then it ends and everyone's Barely. Like, we barely have <laughs> soccer, soccer games. games. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I got to run. Yeah, okay. Have a yeah. good trip, man. Thanks, um, man. What's your uh, Twitter or whatever? Barry Rothbart. This song is in place of a copyrighted song. This song is in place of a copyrighted song. When Jews, um, when Jews, uh, when they uh, loan money to people, Royal Plaza. Oh yeah, Royal Plaza, Decent Hotel. Um, when they loan money to people, you know, you charge interest. That's how you make money. Um, that's how Jews make money: charging interest. But they are not allowed to charge interest to other Jews. But they are allowed to charge interest to non-Jews. And in fact, in fact, they are um, not pushed to, what's the word? Encouraged to. 
That's just normal. That's just normal. Um, wow. Wow. Jesus, man. Whew. All right. Um, so, a lot of rabbis talk, and they say, by the way, that was episode uh, 145, Son of the Mob, with Barry Rothbart. Thank you, Barry. Make sure to check out his website. Check out all his stuff. Really, really funny comic, you guys. You, you will know of him soon. If there's any justice in the world, and it seems like there is, he seems like he's starting to get ahead. So if I were you, I would check out some of Barry Rothbard's stuff. I posted some of his videos on my on the website. Um, the one he did, the knockoff of the Carlos Mencia Joe Rogan thing that he did with magicians, that'll be on there. Um, check it out. Um, okay, so we're not allowed to charge interest to Jews. So there comes a theory that, like, whoa, what are you saying that Jews? are somehow more valuable than non-Jews, and it's okay to like hurt the non-Jews, but it's not okay to do that to Jews? Here's the answer my rabbis have given me in Israel. It's not that we want to punish non-Jews. It's not that at all. It's that we want to give a reward to Jews. And by the way, you guys, I'm not 100% invested in Judaism. In fact, I don't do any of the laws. But I'll tell you what I've learned and what makes sense to me. And I'll tell you what sounds right, what doesn't sound right. What doesn't sound right is that the state of Israel is becoming an apartheid state. That little children have to watch their homes being blown up when they haven't really done anything wrong. They haven't thrown a rock. They haven't staged a protest. They haven't tried to smuggle arms through a checkpoint. And their homes are being destroyed. That's problematic. That's majorly problematic. And they have an apartheid state where I know that's not fair, but really you're saying if you're an Arab, you can't be as full a citizen as a Jew. And that's way too similar to South Africa. I mean, Mandela passed this week, I guess. I should say something about it. What's interesting to me is that we, we, the United States, viewed him as a terrorist for a long time. And then at some point when we slowly realized, well, he was just trying to free his country. We dropped the terrorism tag and we just saw him as a freedom fighter and then later as a activist. And I kind of wonder how the United States government and the media uses the word terrorist and what effects that would have on people. Using the word terrorist instead of a crazy person, like that guy in, uh, in uh, Aurora who shot up a theater, not terrorist. <clears throat> Nobody really said terrorist, even though he caused terror. He was, it doesn't seem like he was doing it for a greater good. It didn't seem like it was part of a bigger push. I don't know, but not a terrorist. When you use the word terrorist to describe somebody who's just blowing up innocence, just killing innocence, you make people like the denotated, the, excuse me, the connotative definitions of that is it just makes people get super emotional and just want to say, oh, well, we're against terrorists. It's a, it's a buzzword. Yasser Arafat was a terrorist. But the children in Palestine, they've done nothing wrong. They're not terrorists and they shouldn't be punished because someone of their race did something wrong. Even many people of their race did something wrong. Even that. It's got to be fixed. Uh, anyway, I just find it interesting about Mandela. And I saw these South African comics here in, uh, in Matru. And uh, a couple of them, I think three of them, talked about Mandela. And I talked to one of them. He was humongous, you guys. He doesn't, I guess we don't realize how big he was. He was like the biggest celebrity who was also a politician. But for 50 years. Um, we don't have anybody like that. Okay, you guys. So here's what I wanted to say. Well, one, I'm just a quick give it up for All Things Comedy, the best network in, in podcasts. Check out all their podcasts. Go to allthingscomedy.com. And just really briefly, let me just say this. Tom Segura has quietly put up a resume of comedy. I heard uh, Stan Hope, who pretty universally respected, levy this complaint about Sarah Silverman. He said, where's her body of work? And I don't have an answer for it. Where's her body of work? She's supposed to be the, one of the best comics of all time, one of the best female comics of all time, one of the best comics of today. 
and yet she has like one special on the Jesus is magic, which is pretty much as a rehash of her other special jokes. Um, and a couple sketches. Where's her body of work now? She just did another album, another uh, special from Largo. that just aired on HBO. Haven't seen it. Don't know about it, but it stuck with me that if you don't have a body of work, how can you consider yourself this, this awesome, massive thing? And I don't know. I don't know. I don't think you can. So, in that spirit, um, Tom Segura has very quietly put up a bunch of albums and specials. He did a half-hour special on Comedy Central, did multiple albums, White Girls with Corn Rose, Thrilled. These are all different hours. Um, special with some repeats. Oh, I did David Tell show, by the way, you guys. I'm going to be on the David Tell Comedy Central show in probably April. Neither here nor there. We'll talk about it later. Um, So anyway, he's a guy on All Things Comedy, Tom Segura. You should check him out. If you haven't yet, you should check him out. And if you want to check him out live, well, January 4th through 8th, he'll be in Virginia Beach at the Virginia Beach Funny Bone. And then the end of January, he'll be in Minneapolis at Acme Comedy Club, January 31st through February something. And then the Denver Comedy Works, February 23rd through the 25th. And Orlando Improv in February also. So check him out. He's just someone you should, uh, I don't know, someone you should see. I like, you know how I feel about comedy. He didn't pay for none of this goddamn music. Cheap ass fucking Jew.